I just love that introduction video. Welcome into the Sylph All Stars semifinals. Today we have Team Prime versus Seven Wonders, and then we have the Squirtle Squad versus Team Chia Chia. And I'm joined here uh, by Adelion and Jolt Switch. Hey, hey. How we doing, guys? How we doing? Fantastic. I'm super hyped um, for these battles. Uh, we can get kind of into the format as we're looking at team compositions, but essentially we have a format which is like a Sylph format. Um, it's the, um, I, I'm, if I'm not wrong, it's the Floating City. The Floating City format where you have four specialists here. It's the ground type, flying type, uh, steel type, and normal type. And there'll be four specialists of a team of seven uh, will battle against each other in this format. And then we have three other uh, specialists. It's a Great League specialist, uh, Ultra League specialist, and a Master League specialist, where you uh, have teams of six, show teams of six, pick three. So it's not like GBL. It's GBL at a whole new level. And one extra wrinkle, which I really enjoy, is in Ultra League, uh, you can have a Legendary, one Legendary, um, and I believe one Starter. And then in Master League, you can have one legendary as well often the dialga but this is just going to be uh fantastic to see what, what do you guys think about this format so far it's a really interesting format i'm i'm really excited to see it here i can't see they also have limited the use of xl candy so everything's got to be level 40 unless it's a best buddy which is uh, another interesting tweak that they got here Right, fantastic point. And I, that's exclusively for Master League, I believe. I think Ultra League, you can throw those level 50 Umbreons like crazy. But in Master League, you can only be level 40, 41 with the best buddy ribbon boost. That's allowed. You can have your, your best buddy breakpoints for uh, Dialga. Uh, but um, a quick, uh, I just want to give a quick thanks. We are in the semifinals. I'm just going to give a quick thanks before we move on to my PvP Academia and Team Rocket Academy uh, for hosting the the rounds before this uh before the semifinals they did a fantastic job i was a part of the team uh rocket academy uh streams and it was just uh fantastic streams great production so shout out to all those wonderful people there and yeah without further ado i, I feel like we should just get started uh we, we should look at the first teams uh like i said it's team prime versus seven wonders uh, for the semifinals here, uh, sorry, it's it's the primes with an S. So apologies uh, for not using the plural version. Uh, but here we go. Uh, we're gonna find out the teams really soon. And here we go. The, the 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 roster of the primes is Sono Roman, Caleb Payne, Jay Pharmacus, uh, Sodmon, Duvains, and Andrew Manjarez and It's Georgino. And then the Seven Wonders, we got Me Fizz, House Stark, Ricky, Ali Lucky, Dr. Trotter, Vanny, and Parzival. Just some fantastic battlers here. Definitely some interesting matchups. And I, I mean, I can't wait to see what these guys put together. I was taking a peek at some of the field specialists there. Uh, they do have some other limitations to their picks in the Great League. Have you taken a peek at them quite yet? Uh, let's yeah, let's look at the let's we can we can look at that, but I believe there mm -hmm. is some limitations where there is no mythical, no shadows, and am I missing any uh, besides that? Uh, Volt switch. No, no megas, no regionals, no Galarian Sunfist, no. Oh yeah, yep. no Alpraya, no Bastiodon, no Registeel. It's it's going to be an interesting matchup there. Yeah, so they, they, they did go ahead and ban the strongest, uh, the strongest Pokemon with the, the G Fist basket on stuff, which I, which I love. I already got too much of those guys in Open Great League. Um, I, I love to see those banned. What, what, what do you think, uh, Delian? Of, uh, have, have you had a chance to uh, check out uh, any of these uh, streams so far? Uh, how are you liking the, the specialist uh, Floating City meta? Well, what I enjoy most about it is that um, it, offers a challenge in terms of team building and try and um, because it's a meta that hasn't been dabbled in before in previous Sylph Cups or indeed in any, in anything else um, it's going to force the uh, force the players here to really think somewhat outside of the box try, try, come up with some new strategies to try and um, overcome their opponents so I'd like to. I, I'm looking forward to seeing just what they come up with, um, which will hopefully lead on to further factions uh, further down the line when the rest of us get to dabble in that uh, functionality. Uh, thank, uh, thanks to the Silver Arena. 
And speaking of that, uh, look at if we could look at the teams just one more time, real quick. There's a wrinkle because before uh, everyone submitted their teams, obvious, obviously, this is a team of seven working on this together. But they were able to change their teams before the semifinals, uh, each each player. So there's one huge thing, uh, especially for Team The Primes. Everyone is running Articuno now, uh, which wasn't the case before. I know we had a game of Articuno, I think, against PvP Poke uh, last, uh, uh, last round, and it was just dominant. Like, there was no answers for that Articuno. And look at how many Articunos we have now. All four of the Primes, and we got one of them uh, for the Seven Wonders. So... Uh, that that is going to be an interesting wrinkle to the meta now. Definitely amazing to see a lot of that Articuno in the in the matchup here. Taking a peek at the rankings, though, Swampert seems to run the cup. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like I, we were always thinking like Swampert is just unstoppable, but the thing is, like, the, it doesn't run the core meta because as you see on a lot of teams, there's the Pelipper, there's the Ferrothorn. And those things just completely wall it. And if those things are just so popular, also the Driftblim safe swap, the Vigoroth safe swap, with those energy advantages, the Swampert doesn't have as much play. Swampert is fantastic because uh, if you don't have it, you're a little bit afraid of those electric typings, which obviously there's a ton of flyers in this cup. So it's, it's a great um, bench pressure. But uh, if for me, if I had to choose an MVP of this format so far, it's got to be Driftblim see a lot of Driftblim on, on these teams as well. I mean, you've got one, two, three, four on the Primes right away. Uh, I think I'm only seeing one or two on the Seven Wonders. Uh, so that's, uh, it looks like another interesting pick. Uh, probably could do some damage with uh, its uh, buffs and debuffs that it comes with too. I wonder if, um, I wonder if with the Primes, because you can see there's a lot more sort of similarity in the teams with the, uh, with the specialists, um, um, because you, men you mentioned Driftblim, you've mentioned Articuna, and that features on all, on all four of the Primes, whereas it seems, I don't know if you guys would agree, there seems to be a little bit more variety on the Seven Wonders side, uh, they're showcasing, well, the Ferrothorn is consistent, um, but there's also reasonably consistent on the Primes as well, I think there's three on the Prime side and four on the Seven Wonders, so I wonder if that extra variety will be a little bit more of a challenge to deal with or whether that will end up being a hindrance um, because that consistency uh, or the consistency they have with the primes will allow them to win out their matches. So I'm, I'm curious, shall we say? <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like maybe team captain Caleb Payne put down the law. You got to run this Articuno. You got to run this Driftlin. And how Stark was like, you know, just run what you feel. Run what you feel here. Uh, <laughs> but without further ado, uh, we have so many battles to get to, so many hype battles to get to. So I think we should just transition and get over to those battles. But I think first we do have an interview that will be going into before the battles. Yeah, it's going to be Caleb Pang, uh, the team captain that laid down the Articuno Drift Blib <laughs> law. Hey everyone, so my name is Caleb Pang. I am the captain of the Primes, and we are very excited to face the Seven Wonders in the semifinals. Um, my initial thoughts on our matchups is I think our team probably doesn't have as many big names in it. I think everyone on Seven Wonders is pretty much a big name and a recognized member of the community and a very strong battler. Um, however, something that we've really done well in our team is really work together and help each other team build and give each other feedback and encouragement throughout our first round series, which we were able to finish off 6-1 and one, um, despite probably being the uh, under-favored um, matchup. And I think in this matchup, we are definitely the underdogs as well. But I think for those that are looking into team formats, something really important uh, to know is that going into these matchups, regardless of how strong your opponents may seem, preparation and uh, encouragement from your teammates is a very important key of success. Uh, so definitely something I recommend for those that are captaining teams in the future. Um, but yeah, looking at my specific matchup against House Stark, uh, who is their team captain as well. We we're both in the Ultra League Specialist position. And uh, I'll be honest, House Stark is one of the best battlers in the entire world, in my opinion. And we've had a lot of really close matchups in the past for various tournaments and various formats. Uh, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. Well, he's a good friend of mine as well, uh, but I know that it's going to be a sweaty battle for sure. Um, I think first off hand, looking at our matchup, his team is definitely a little bit weak to Cresselia, but also Cresselia isn't a hard win for a lot of his 
uh, for ma matchups that we may have as well. So um, definitely something to maneuver around. Um, either way, I think it's going to be a really good series uh, and a really good match with House Stark as well. So I hope you all enjoy the matches and yeah, best of luck to both sides. All right, great to hear from Caleb there. And he brought his cat. I couldn't keep my eyes off that cat. <laughs> I don't even know what Caleb said. Just kidding. I'm a huge fan of Caleb. Caleb's a fantastic battler, fantastic content creator, and a great imposter as well. Uh, real quick, before we get to the battles, uh, just shout out to Jay Mackle for the battles and Gerard uh, for the raids. Thanks so much. Welcome in, everybody. All right, and we, we do have House Stark, the other, uh, the captain of the Seven Wonders. So uh, we'll see what kind of animal he brought, and uh, we'll have that interview here, and then we'll get to the battles. Hi there. This is Alex, also known as House Stark, and I'm your coach of the Seven Wonders. Now, how did, how did we get here? Well, we had to face off against Team Hex, which, honestly, they were one of the tougher teams out there, and... We were just able to barely sneak out a win. If you haven't already seen those battles, make sure to check them out. They were just super difficult, super sweaty, and now we're here. Well, we're here, and that means that we have to face off against an even harder team, which is the Primes. And, I mean, as much as I'm looking forward to, to battling their team, there's no easy wins. They just have a stacked roster up and down, and we were not really sure, like, looking at our team, we were talking and saying, like, how, what do we do? Um, we just had to come up with a really good game plan. And then I had to look at my opponent and say, well, here we go. And my opponent this week is, of course, Caleb Pang. One of the, not just the best battlers in the world, best YouTubers in the world, but one of the best people in our community. And I just had a really good opportunity here to, um, to just learn and, and learn from the best. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, just no matter what happens, we're just here to have fun and put on a show for you guys. So, let's watch some really good battles. I hope you guys enjoy. All right. Well, well there it is. We heard from both team captains. And I believe we're going to get into the games now. Um, we have Giorgino versus parsable two amazing battlers here and i believe they were both um in the floating city specialist uh uh the sylph format i believe uh is yeah, their right. role on the team and we will see their teams right here uh so it's looking like yeah it, it's definitely they are the floating city specialists both rocking the articuno both rocking the pelipper uh the ferrothorn the vigoroth Obstagoon. Uh pretty much the same team except for Parzival's got that Swamper and it's Giorgino's got that Driftling. Definitely gonna be some interesting matchups here. Uh, I mean if Parzival brings that Driftlim and Articuno, we got pretty much everything covered aside from the Articuno on the other side. Uh, same can be said for uh for Parzival. Is uh, that Articuno covers everything, like you said earlier. It's gonna be right. All right, we're getting into the game. Uh, take it away, Joel Switch. Now we do have that Obstagoon leaning against Vigoroth here. Vigoroth's going to do some excellent super effective damage with the fighting uh, type move here. Pelipper switching in for uh, its Giorgino. Getting to that charge attack really quickly. We know those body slams come out crazy fast with that counter. Gets to the excellent, yeah. of course. Landing and the interesting, thing, the interesting thing about that is... Uh, if you have energy advantage, that Vigoroth does outpace those weather balls and takes that matchup. So uh, Parzibol does decide to get out of there, start to go for a farm down on Articuno, going to shield this first weather ball, maybe let the second one go, and he might get this full farm down at Delion. Oh no, it looks like he's going for it. Wants to give a little, uh, a little debuff with the answer into Delion, take it away. I was like, I was uh, curious whether he was going to shield there or not, and he has decided to do so just to see if he can, can he pull off the hurricane in time. Yes, just manages it. So now it's the question of does uh, art, uh, does the does possible shield or not? He's choosing not to. Will the debuff keep it in life? Yes, it does. Even better. So that's a little bit of energy on Articuno. So what's going to come back in? And okay, Obstagoon's coming uh, coming back in, so the icy wind immediately going off in order to uh, get that debuff off before Articuno goes down. Um, so that's looking good. So how many? Yeah, and Articuno is super thick. 
uh in great league especially with the non-shadow so it looks like uh looks like he's gonna switch out into that uh vigoroth did he get enough of a counter lead or was it a simultaneous swap i believe the vigoroth has one more counter one. Yeah. uh then the pelipper has wing attack here getting that weather ball and we're gonna see if uh if vig can take it of course he can he's got about a third of his health left racing for another body slam he's got two charged back to back will we see a shield for that pelipper to keep it up and alive it doesn't look like he's Oh, yeah, that, that yeah. last snap, very nice. Takes a block, and like you said, it, it can outpace there. He's got that second one launching right away. Do some damage on that Pelipper. We'll have to see if it can uh, it can stand up to the rest of that Vigoroth here today. And it's going to need a second body slam. He's uh, The Pelipper's already at this weather ball. Uh, you would expect to see the shield here. No shield uh, oh, wow. for okay. its Georgino here. Looking oh, to farm totally down this cool. Pelipper. But Pelipper is a hard Pokemon to farm down. It's already close to the next weather ball. And then here comes the Obstagoon. Obstagoon cannot farm down with the counters. Just doesn't do enough damage. And then another weather ball comes. So he's going to have to shield this one. And he's going to have to be very careful to throw his moves properly gets that shield right away and of course he's going to try and get it down switching out to uh, to that bigger off now we're going to see another fighting type attack on a normal type and you know it does that super effective damage hits him with the cross chop brings him down to with about a quarter health left gets oh gets one. two off oh he gets the second one off at the um pretty much back to back so then now it's the race to see whether this Pelipper can go down before yeah that Vigoroth yeah. did sneak in one counter which is huge oh, because uh, now this yeah. Obstagoon might die to wing attack but it's gonna get outpaced it's barely gonna t oh, oh it takes yeah. him out with the wing attack that the one counter snuck through was huge for the Vigoroth there but also that Pelipper in the back was gonna outpace the weather ball uh fantastic game number one there a yeah, great really match. Well I did see Articuno do quite a bit of work there on on uh, one of those teams, and like you said, it's it's hard to run through it, especially when it's got that debuff to slow down the opponent on the damage you're doing. Yeah, and one thing that's big for me is like if we're gonna see a lot of like Pelipper to Vigoroth matchup, how are these players gonna flip that uh, energy? So even energy, Pelipper does win it. But if you if you just get that one counter and just barely outpace, you can pick up that Pelipper matchup. Obviously, the flying types are just so good here. Um, yeah, let's let's check out game number two. Quick lead here. It's Georgie Journey going with that Pelipper once again. We got Obstacoon on the other side. And we'll have to see how this, uh, how this picks up. Can see that we've got Vigoroth on uh, Istrogino's side here, getting to the weather ball, but Obstagoon gets to its, its charge attack first. Getting great energy all the way to the excellent Night Slash landing, no shield out there. And uh, it looks like we're going for that yep. hurricane possibly to land. Yeah, Pelipper here. is just trying to get to the the back to back weather ball. Uh, Faking the hurricane energy, see if he gets the shield here. He's just going for the weather ball and uh, Parzable does give close, up the shield yeah. there. So it's Georgino uh, getting up to that hurricane was actually huge. And he's just going to let this go. He doesn't die to this Night Slash. And he, like I said before, he's really hard to farm down. So he's either going to get to another move or maybe swap out, save this energy. No, he weather balls, but it's on a swap, swapped into the Pelipper. Wow, really great well play by Parzable. Switch. Yeah, really good switch good there. there. Getting out, uh, getting out that weather ball on the uh, opposing Pelipper. We'll have to see if uh, if he can get that timer down enough to switch out. Get to the Obstagoon. Isn't it going to be a, a crazy matchup here, though? That's the big question. Not going for the shield once again with the weather ball coming through from Parzival. And we'll have to see what uh, what comes out. The, the interesting down, thing but... is, even though that was a fantastic swap by Parzable to take that weather ball, now the dimensions of the Pelipper is that so two Night Slashes will kill it. So even though that was a fantastic swap, it does change the dimensions of the game because one more Night Slash will kill this Pelipper here. And I believe the Pelipper will outpace. It's a little bit of lag, and the Pelipper does get to that Weather Ball first. That's a big, big thing because just to... That will chip away at the Obstagoon's health quite a bit. Oh, what a just call! <laughs> nice catch what? gets to that Night Slash, which will, which will end it if we don't get the shield. But I mean, with that little health, do you want to burn that shield? It's Georgino oh, knows knows it's yeah. Obstagoon. It survives with one health, gets the farm down. Uh, Articuno with one ice shard. It's Georgino has two shields here. What does he bring in? There's a little bit of lag. It is the Vigoroth here, uh, and this Vigoroth just goes to the body slam straight away because it doesn't want to take that icy wind debuff, and so it forces the last shield out of Parzable. Definitely gonna be an interesting matchup with the Pelper with minimal health left. This uh, this Vigoroth is gonna have to do quite a bit of work. Gonna have to get both of those shields into this game finally. And a little bit choppy here, but uh, we see that the 
Vigoroth does shield that Icy Wind. And with these Icy Winds ramping up, oh no, he's gonna just sack the Obstagoon here. Oh. Just going for the Obstagoon sack, but will he get to a cross shot first? No, he doesn't get to this cross shot, but this Body Slam is debuffed. Is there ever a way this Obstagoon survives and gets to a cross shot? That's gonna be really interesting to see. Does yep. he get there? One. One. Oh, oh what a beautiful the switch. switch. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful switch. Wow. Oh, wow. Now, this is why. It'll it's it, Giorgino though. with the, the swap to absorb that Night Slash. Now we got Vigoroth uh, for uh, It's Giorgino here with a Body Slam and a half. Uh, this Body Slam should be able to almost kill the Articuno, and at this point, he can almost just counter down. I believe It's Giorgino does have one shield left, and he does. It's beautiful because it's back to neutral damage because it got rid of that debuff. Here it comes back once again, though, with that Icy Wind going to come in, even though that shield's up. Bring down the attack on Groth here. Going to get to that body slam and, and that's be able to do the rest I reckon. Of that yeah. It's just a minute. It just goes to show at this sort of level with that kind of precision timing on the switches, just why these players are so, so good. It's just brilliant plays on both sides there. And that's t that timing really did entertain me quite a bit. <laughs> exactly right. And the beautiful thing about some of these metas, where there's a lot of neutral matchups, you really see great fluid gameplay where uh, it's, uh, it's Georgino just knows exactly how much his obscure can take, barely survives that, CMPs on the Night Slash to get that off, and obviously that great sack swap. And are we 2-0 uh, It's Georgino here? Or is that 1-1? One I do believe Either. we are one-to-one. -one. Oh, we, we are one-to-one. -one. One -one. These games have been so hyped, and they have the exact same team. I kind of lost count for a second, but it looks <laughs> like we are one-to-one. -one. We're going to get into the third game here. Obstacoon versus that Articuno. Parzival rocking the Articuno. Probably going to try and get to that Icy Wind once again to start the debuff. We'll have to see if uh, Obstacoon sticks in this to try and do some work. Getting to that charge attack. Night Slash coming out. Shield there. Wow, for the shield Articuno. early. Oh, okay. Bold. Looks like yeah, typically, to... it's a lot of times these Articunos will shield first just because they want to get this icy wind off uh, and take the lesser damage moves later. So yes. he does get this icy wind. And once again, it's Georgino just really doesn't even want to shield his obstacle. Definitely leaving it out in the open there. But um, I mean, if it can take the heat, he might as well do it. Here comes another light, Night Slash. And of course, like you said, not seeing those shields because now it's debuffed. Not going to do as much damage as expecting. It looks like we're going for another icy win from that Articuno. Going to bring that that attack once again. And jo and Georgino is deciding not to shield, let it let it go here. So um, that's the en the four counters worth of energy is not used, unfortunately. But rings in the fig, uh, which will he'll just see if you can try. He's going to get the farm down. down. He gets yes, the he farm does. down. Brilliant, brilliant. Ooh. Wow. Nice. Fantastic call by It's Giorgino there. He is just playing uh, really well these last two games. And now he has the energy advantage against this Pelipper. And he has the shield advantage. This is just looking very good for It's Giorgino. Has the Pelipper in the back. It's met by the Vigroth. And now he's going to throw this last body slam. And then you would have to assume, get out of here to his own Pelipper and resist those counters instead of taking super effective damage. Shields come out on the opponent's um, Vigoroth, and yep, as you as you predicted, Pelipper comes in, and then this is going to be a lot of fun for Pelipper now with the shield advantage. Um, he's not deciding to shield this, which makes sense. Tank the first body slam, and then spam out the weather balls. I'm guessing. Uh, so yeah, let's see if that does go on. He's farming up a bit extra. Maybe he's trying to uh, get. But two back to back is most likely this shield coming in, which is unsurprising as well. Now with it being closer to KO range. So yeah, looking good and, so and far. The thing is for Parzable, he's getting close to his timer. So he's gonna, oh my God though, but uh, it's Georgino goes for the hurricane. So the timer is not gonna matter at all. I was saying Parzable is gonna have to make a big play, but he gets hurricane. He has no he has no Pokemon to sacks off with. All he has is his Pelipper in the back, uh, no shields. And then here comes a weather ball by it's Georgino's Pelipper. And remember, uh, it's Georgino still has that Vigoroth in the back and a shield advantage. Going for that weather ball simultaneously, seeing the, uh, there it is, that CMP tie going to It's Giorgino. Not hitting all those bubbles, probably looking to try and farm it down a little bit to get a little more energy to stand up against that Vigoroth in the back there. Yeah, and this yeah, Vigoroth in the back uh, is just going to get to this body slam, and It's Giorgino is going to take it 2-1, to one, and Team The Primes is going to be up 1-0 to zero against 7 Wonders.
really fantastic plays on both both sides there. But yeah, that was a re really well deserved win by Georgino. I I really like his strategy there too. Uh, no shield in the lead, just take the shield advantage. It, these matchups are are quite neutral in the back, as you saw. Both both uh, both players were running Vigoroth and Pelipper in the back. Uh, so a little energy advantage here or there just flips those matchup, and then so that extra shield flips it up even uh, flips it even more. And the big play to be able to farm down that Articuno before it got to another icy wind to get that energy advantage. Uh, just great composure by It's Georgino and a true mastery of those matchups. That was perfectly, perfectly planned. Definitely beautiful there. And you can see the, the energy management was there. The shield management was there. It came right down to that last battle and minimal hit points to get everything taken care of there for them today. Cool. Next match. <laughs> And next up, we have uh, Andrew versus Vani. And uh, like we were saying before, uh, if you're on Team's Caleb team, uh, you, you got to run the Articuno Drift Limb. You have no choice uh, or else uh, he'll sick his cat on you. Just kidding. <laughs> but uh, and then the interesting thing is uh, a lot of Metamons and then running the Stun Fisk and Vani also running the Stun Fisk, but the Escavalier in Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz is an absolute monster in this meta. Uh, the Escavalier doesn't usually see much play against all these flying types, but it's an interesting pick there. Definitely Wonder. interesting pick that uh, with that Mandibuzz. It does um, it, it does sit kind of interesting with the matchup itself. But again, we're seeing Articuno for Andrew uh, being able to pull wins across the board for each and every um, Mon on the opposition. Yeah, and Jolt Switch does have some threat scores. So, uh, so for the threat scores, it just looks like Articuno is just looking so good here. <laughs> Is the that correct? Two, the lower score to is Escavalier and Swampert, both at a 524. Everything else is up in over 600. So it's going to be a, an interesting matchup. He's going to have to find a way to to work down that Articuno with uh, probably a mod and a half just to be able to make it work. I'm really interested to see with uh, what moveset is being run on Escavalier as well, because like I'm looking at the uh, team composition, I'm thinking, okay, his drill run is very uh, would normally be very popular, but like there's not too much coverage offered there with, with so many flyers, but there's, let's say it gets caught against the stun fisk, or let's say it gets caught against uh, the Ferrothorn Thorn, and you want to, you can't farm down enough with counter. Uh, that's where the drill run may come in very handy um, in those situations. But yeah, I, I, that's one thing I'll be keeping a close eye on, seeing what moveset is on that Escavalier. Yeah, I think it has to have the aerial ace. As you said, there's three flying types, and it's just it's just so hard for this Escavalier to do anything, though. Uh, probably for Vani looking to have some Mandibuzz, uh, have some big plays for it. Um, and the interesting thing is, uh, like you were saying, the, the threat score, how are they going to take care of the Articuno? Is uh, Andrew going to go ahead and lead that Articuno, or safe swap it, or keep it in the back? And he knows it's his weapon, and Fani is going to have to tag team to take it down. So let's get into these matches and see how they go. Leading with, uh, with Drift Blim for Andrew and Ferrothorn for, uh, for Vanny. Here we go, taking it away. Looking like we're not doing very much effective damage, of course. We do, by the looks of it, have Icy Wind, as well as... Here comes that, uh, that yeah, thunder. And just, a quick shield, point, uh, just a quick point out. Uh, it looks like uh, Andrew has a Quagsire in the back, so I think that Stun Fist position on the team cards is a Quagsire, which is kind of interesting. Quagsire has different coverage, has that Stone Edge, than the Stun Fist, and what a swap by Vani to take this Shadow Ball! That's beautiful. Banishing to land the thunder as well as to, um, swap the sh uh, swap into the shadow ball uh, is two very big, big advantages there. So re two fantastic plays. Uh, so yeah, this switching into the Articuno is a safe swap now, uh, but the Mandibuzz is still going to get a foul play off uh, just before that uh, Icy Wind hits. So let's see how much um, Andrew farms up before he drops Icy Wind. Two or three more um, Ice Shards worth. Let's see, this... Oh, Mandibuzzers might go down here. 
oh no, it's tankier than that. <laughs> it's just too <laughs> thick, and it gets the one last foul play. And at this point, uh, the Articuno could take this no problem. And one interesting thing is this Articuno is running Ancient Power as the second move. So it's going to get a farm down here, and it's going to be loaded with an Icing Wind straight away. So how is Vani going to want to take this um, into the Ferrothorn, just taking this Icing Wind in? Uh, like I was saying before, just a fantastic swap, Joel Switch. Definitely an amazing swap there. Articuno is going to be leaving this Barrel Tharn with a, a lovely parting gift, locking it in a little bit with uh, with that attack debuff. We're going for a charge attack here. You're going to be able to land this, uh, unless we, of course, see a shield. Oh, the shield there does come out. And it's, it's a good thing. That Articuno yeah. alive. You take it away, Antonio. No, do it's just like... Go, go on, bosses, mate. You go first. Yeah, we, we, we do see that shield, and I was thinking, was he trying to farm down? But he has to throw energy anyway. Is is he thinking he's going to get to one more Icy Wind or whatever is in the back? And he will. But will he be outpaced? The Swamper's going to get to the Hydro Cannon first? Hydro, uh, Hydro Cannon just hit makes its mark just beforehand. So will the shield come out or not? It does come out. Oh, okay. Okay. So the Icy Wind debuff's going to come in. And here it comes, as we as we suspect, his shield coming in to protect the Swampert, un somewhat unsurprisingly. So this is going to be tricky now um, for the Swampert to deal with the debuff. Um, uh, with the debuff, and Quagsai comes in at this point. Uh, so the hydro cannon is probably going to come out now, or or he's going up a bit further. Double hydro cannon, which makes sense. Man, um, and uh, but I believe they see impede on this stone edge here. He does see impede on the stone edge, able to get the last shield most likely. And at this point, with the icing with debuff, he's out of range of double hydro cannon. And one more big factor is Andrew has two flying types in the back. Uh, with health, which cannot be farmed down. The Swampert has to be so careful with his energy, and he's just going to go for the Earthquake here because he needs to kill this Quagsire. He spends all his energy, though. Now Andrew has two flying types to just land one move. Oof, this is going to be really, really tough. Really, really, like, really tough. Small health on everything. It's going to be really interesting to see what what he can pull out of the out of the bag. He, he has the icy wind already. He throws the icy wind on the drift limb, and at this point, the swamper cannot farm down. But how does Andrew play his timer? He's gonna throw this icy wind here. He doesn't. He can't farm down with the hexes, and he doesn't want this swamper to get two hydro cannons. But that's what the swamper is going for. But no, he just gets hexed down trying to get for the double hydro cannon. Yeah, that was the only win condition was to get the get to the two hydro cannons. So it really didn't either go for gold or go, or go for glory, and that was it. So I'm not surprised the Swampert tried to go for two, uh, but yeah, it just wasn't enough uh, in the tank for Swampert to stay in there. Sadly, oh well. <laughs> Great, hey guys. Place. I don't want to to cut in here, but just to do a quick checkup, uh, the Quagsire is actually in place of the Pelipper. So Andrew is running okay. uh, Quagsire in place of that Pelipper. Apologize okay, fantastic. Thank you uh, for the update. So yeah, it is Quagsire instead of that Pelipper, and the Stun Fisk is, is still there. Um, wow, but uh, just a quick review of that match. Vani with the absolute insane swap uh, on his Mandibuzz to catch that Shadow Ball, but it wasn't enough. I really love Andrew's play of leaving the Articuno and Driftblim at like 10% health because it just can't get farmed down by the Swamper. The Swampert's mud shots basically heal those Pokemon, so the Swampert has to get all the way to the Hydro Cannons, and it just couldn't in time. Even though that Swampert had two shields in the back, it just couldn't take out those 10% health Pokemon. Uh, just absolute fantastic play by uh, both players. Basically, really feel like <laughs> taking a mud bath there is what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> And and yeah, so uh, uh, Team Primes and Andrew up uh, one to zero. Let's get into game number two. Right, Quagsire into Mandibuzz. Mandibuzz, that's going to be an interesting matchup. We'll have to see if uh, Mandibuzz runs off because of that uh, that Stone Edge. But <laughs> yeah, what, what's the threat score on this one? I'm not I'm not quite sure what this matchup is, but obviously these Stone Edges are super effective. Uh, the Mud Shots are resisted, and Mandibuzz is quite tanky. But I feel like in the No Shield or even Shields, Quagsire might just pull out ahead. If we're even one Shields, Quagsire has a 556 against this Mandibuzz. Okay, fantastic. Safe swap into. Oh my god, though, it's the Earthquake. Andrew <laughs> called the swap, and he throws the Earthquake onto the Swampert, so the Swampert Ooh, gets chunked there. 
Oh, that oh, yeah. beautiful, beautiful damage there, and then straight into the diff drift plane. This is a repeat of what's happened. Uh, what happened in the last match with drift plane able to soak up those mud shots, no problem at all. Uh, it's choosing not to shield this fir uh, first uh, hydro cannon in order to farm up a bit more. So let's see how much he's able to do. Oh, he's allowing the second hydro cannon to come through. Uh, so will there be a shield? There is a shield. Ah, okay, cool. So he's going to farm down completely and then throw icy wind on what comes out uh, afterwards. I'm guessing. It looks like he may. He's got pretty much back to back here, so he can do quite a bit of damage. And if this Manta Buzz lets it through, oh, those ice type attacks are not going to be pretty on the flying type. Nope. Yeah, but Manta man Buzz just so tanky, taking that no problem. And does he stay in with the Drift Blum? He does. At this point, let's see if Andrew knows the matchup. Does he barely survive, or is he going to sack this Drift Blum? He does sack the Drift Blum, and he goes down. The foul play was just enough, and there's an Escavalier in the back, and we're going to find out that moveset like you want to see, Adelon. Yeah, I was like, I was, I'm super curious about this. So the earthquake coming in to take out the second shield on uh, the Escavalier. Um, and then I imagine there will be a swap. We'll see. Oh, no, he's staying in. He's choosing to stay in. Okay. Maybe he wants to learn a bit more about what that moveset is. Oh, well-timed, those. Well-timed. And it is an aerial ace on, Esca uh, on Escavalier. So will... Uh, will it be go shielded? Probably not there, yeah. and and that's unsurprising there. Okay, okay. Yeah, and so I believe he was trying to sack on that drill one. Doesn't quite get it. Takes that arrow ace. He has one mm -hmm. shield left. He's gonna use it here. And the thing is, uh, Vani's the scavalier does resist uh, these ice moves, and he does have the ancient power, which would be neutral. But he does go straight for this icy wind, trying to make those aerial aces even weaker. The shield comes up from Vani, and at this point, I think he's going to outpace to the next aerial ace, but will it be enough for the Articuno? Yes, I think this was the intention, intentional play, because catching the shield with icy wind is good, because now we reckon the ancient power will come as a bit of a surprise when Articuno is able to throw it, if Articuno is able to throw it, so let's see. How oh my god, survives. The Articuno survives with one health, able to get the next Icy Wind off. And is this enough to kill the Escavalier? The Escavalier also awful. lives with little health and swapped into the Mandibuzz. And here comes the Stone Edge, but I don't think Stone Edge is enough. Mandibuzz is so tanky. Nope, it, I don't think it'll be enough either. So let's see. Takes it into the oh, red, but nope, just not, not enough quite. in the tank. And straight away with the foul play. Well, getting it to a 1 1 matchup if this lands and ends. Of course, it's going to land and end. What am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all he needs to do is one snarl, one snarl. Uh, to take out that Articuno. Fantastic play by Vani there. And man, the, the Quagsire double flyer team from Andrew, the double icy winders in the back, the Articuno and the Drift Flame, that are just so good versus Vani. And uh, Vani was able to. Uh, I think bait out that drift limb, uh, eff effectively bait out that drift limb so that Escavalier could actually do something in the back against that Articuno, resisting those ice shards and icy winds. So uh, great play by Vani there. Definitely an amazing matchup there, switching, baiting him out, getting him to do what he wanted him to do. That's, uh, that's one way to play chess, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we are uh, tied one to one here. So let's get into game number three. Oh, first appearance of the Stunfisk. Okay. That's going to be doing some amazing damage depending on what it's got. Yeah, it's going for the electric attack. So you know any of those flying types are going to have a hard time right away. Uh, Articuno coming out for, uh, for Andrew, getting the swap. Of course, we're going to see shields because, again, that electric attack is super effective there. Yeah, the safe switch Articuno, because Articuno is just his strongest Pokemon, is going to be really good. Look how much these ice shards are just adding up onto the Stunfisk here. Even, even though it's behind uh, in energy, these icy winds are just going to start crippling it. And if he shields a nest, it, it, this is going to determine a lot if he wants to shield this. And he, he immediately no shields it. Definitely has a plan in mind there, and we can mm -hmm. see, of course, like you said, those ice type attacks doing that super effective damage to the Stunfisk. Going for another icy wind, gonna drop it down a little bit further. We'll have to see if there's a shield coming from Vanny here. There it is. Come out, yeah. And that and that's crazy. It looked like actually Articuno safely wins that one shield, even behind on energy, which is just nuts. And does he care about the swap advantage? He does not. He got both the shields out of the way. Uh, and he's gonna have Driftlum in the back to close, which is a fantastic closer, and plus he's gonna get a nice farm down with Ferrothorn. 
Ooh. Yeah, this is work looking really looking really really good now because the those mud bombs are not going to do very much at all. I'm probably thinking what 20 20 percent of Ferrothorn's health taken out with the two DUFs. Yeah, even less if that. So yeah, this is just map farm down city. Uh, let's see how much can he squeeze out of that. He gets oh, dies six, on that mud bomb. Six bullet seeds worth, we reckon. So let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it... for the mirror. And Vani does barely die on that mud bomb. And then Andrew looked to be at 100 energy. I don't know if he wasted a bullet seed worth of energy here. Just going for uh, the power whip, which I think is less energy efficient than the thunder because one single to double. And then now it's the Driftblim into the Mandibuzz. And Driftblim does have one shield, but uh, these foul plays are just going to be adding up really quick here, Jolt Switch. Definitely going to be adding up quite a bit, but we're going to see all of that Icy Wind doing as much damage as it, as it can for a debuff move, uh, being able to to get that energy and that uh, that attack power down every time we land one. Just a second one in a row before we even get a charge attack from that Mandibuzz. It's going to be a really interesting matchup now that things have changed with uh, that attack stat. Um, getting it right down to the yellow health, there's about a third left. Now we're going to see that foul play. Here it comes. Choosing not to shield, which is interesting, but I suppose with a double debuff, um, maybe we won't do as much damage. Nope, that's pretty decent, pretty decent amount. You will have to shield the second foul play that comes, I would imagine, or do, not. He go does. Yeah. He's going to keep uh, keep working it down. And here comes. Yeah, and I was wondering why would you double up when you're getting debuffed, but even while debuffed twice, the foul play is just enough. So it looks like this last icy wind is going to go through. It's going to kill the Mandibuzz here. And uh, remember, both players do have Ferrothorns in the back. I believe Andrew has a full thunder almost. Uh, no, he needs two more bullet seeds to get that thunder, but instant swap back into the Ferrothorn. And looks like Vani does know that thunder is the more energy efficient move, so is throwing this thunder. I wonder if uh, previously, the, but when the power whip was thrown, that was was that to try and bait out uh, uh, anything. But I, well, I don't can't I think if my memory serves, there wasn't any shields to bait, so I'm not sure what happened there. But hey ho, this um, and still going for the power whip here as well. Again, hmm. okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I could be wrong about this. Uh, maybe uh, our. Uh... Our expert Volt Switch can look up the energy efficiency after this, but I do. Th oh no! But now he's going for the Thunder, so realizing ah oh, maybe Power Whip is not the play, and now he yeah. needs to land uh, another Thunder. One more Thunder coming in for Vani here, but remember, Vani has a Drift Limb in the back with some health. It's definitely gonna be That's crazy to see what happens next. And landing more Thunders back and uh, back and forth, of course, doing quite a bit more damage than as we could see that uh, that other Grass type attack. I think it's here a double beat. It's a double resistance that um, that may have not been considered when dropping power. It's one on bullet seed. Oh wait, the Driftlim's gone? I thought there was a Driftlim in the back. I my apologies, the Driftlim was gone. And does Andrew just take that two to one? Seems so. Yes, Andrew yeah. takes that two to one. My apologies. I thought there was a little bit left on the Driftlim. I thought he swapped out, but he must have taken a move before he swapped out. And Power whip doesn't matter. Uh, Andrew and the primes go up two to zero. Really, really solid battling there, and it was just it's it was fun to see like how um, they played their the their ferrothorns were a different way, or when they chose to put the mirror in. It's it ends up being quite a slow matchup with the uh, ferrothorn mirror, um, and I think the and I think like the power whip choice was interesting um i was trying to i was trying to work out what the sort of rationale there was and i was the only thing i could come up with was uh trying to bait out shields but hey ho <laughs> yeah definitely an interesting matchup there i mean if there were shields i could see it maybe being to throw off counts so you're not really sure what to expect coming forward but uh I mean, it, it, it didn't really and, and wrong. these players really know what they're doing. There's there's two things. The first one could have been if you throw the power whip, then you save more energy to get to a thunder later. If you want to get to that thunder later, because I believe when he threw that power whip, there was still a drift limb left. So maybe he wanted uh, to bank more energy to have that thunder for the drift limb. And then also maybe the dimensions of Fairthorn say you need to, to land six moves to kill an a, a, a enemy. Fairthorn, and if you land four thunders and two power whips, it just does that instead of I don't know. But uh, he did run thunder at the end, so maybe he realized maybe power whip is not the play. But does it matter? Uh, they take it two to one, and now team the primes is up two to zero uh, off off the bat in these semifinals. So what does that tell you that we should always listen to Caleb Peng? <laughs> or oh, sorry, let's clarify. We should always listen to Caleb Peng's cat because we all know who the real mastermind is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Caleb Puppet uh, for the cat <laughs> there. Uh, just kidding. But next we have Jay Farm against Ricky. Um, and this should be a fantastic matchup. I, I, I do believe we might be looking at another um, uh, Floating City matchup. And we will see what we have. Oh, no. This looks to be open Great League. This is open yeah. Great League for Jay Farm and Ricky here. No surprises there with some of the uh, some of the Pokemon being selected in the Open Great League format. Um, so you can see quite a few very common Pokemon. You will see, say, in Open Great League in GBL, for example. Um, notice, folks, that the Hypno is a shadow, and I wonder if that changes the dynamic against some of the uh, Pokemon on Ricky's team, if that Shadow Hypno is lined up correctly. Uh, I definitely think it makes it better against the flying types. If you have a Shadow Hypno with Fire Punch, it's much better, or it is better against the Tropius and Skarmory, uh, usually being able to take out those matchups with the Fire Punch and the One Shield. It actually doesn't do well against the Skarmory if it does have Brave Bird and Sky Attack. Uh, it does a lot more damage against that poor Toxicrope that's uh, double weak. That's uh, something to keep yeah. an eye on. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, and looks like for the f the fighters, J Farm goes for the uh, Surfetched, and uh, Ricky going for that classic Toxicroak here. Um, otherwise, both teams have the Tropius uh, G Fisk, and then for the alternate flyers, uh, J Farm picking that Pelipper, Ricky with the Skarmory, and then of course you got to bring the Bunny. Uh, they both got the asses. <laughs> The Surfetch is going to be pretty pretty cool to, um, uh, against a lot of the team as well. Because I so I really enjoy uh, playing with Surfetch. I even though it's a little bit frail, its versatility uh, is a real strength for it. So will it have Leaf Blade to deal with Azu? Will it have Night Slash? Will it have, believe it or not, Close Combat or Brave Bird for like really really spicy plays? Who knows? But therein lies the excitement and the surprise factor that J Farm can bring on Ricky. So yeah, this looks this is shaping up to look real real good yeah i would expect that leaf blade brave bird there because you don't really need the night slash anything so uh let's just get into these battles of J farm versus ricky all right cool <laughs> J farm with the cell phone uh couldn't find his footage here and this is just a fantastic lead for ricky Ooh. yeah it's that cool. on that shadow hypno ouch Switching out Tropius to Azumarill here. It looks like Tropius is running um, Air Slash, the, yeah. Air Slash, so it's not going to be doing the super effective damage of Razor Leaf, but it has it's a really nice be Ice Beam. It, it is, is Ice, ice beam. beam. Wow, big hit, big hit there. Okay, that's going to be that's going to be uh, concerning, but I suppose you can get to two Leaf Blades before the next Ice Beam hits. Uh, potentially. So yeah, first ice, uh, first Leaf Blade is coming off now, and then maybe squeeze one more Air Slash before getting off the second Leaf Blade. First Leaf Blade goes unshielded, unsurprisingly, and then here comes the second. I imagine a shield will come up for this, but let's see what happens. Yeah, and a J Farm definitely wants to take uh, the swap advantage here. So he does shield that Leaf Blade, going for the next Ice Beam. He has a lot of energy. Is he maybe going to try to get to the next Ice Beam? If he's capped out on energy, he only needs one more bubble to get to that next Ice Beam. Yeah, and the shield comes out to protect the Tropius, so Ricky's uh, keen not to give it away quite so, uh, give the advantage away quite so easily. Another Leaf Blade comes through. Will it be a second shield taken here or not? That could shift the entire battle. There's the second shield, like you said, not wanting to give away that sh that uh, switch advantage. Looks like he's uh, storing energy as well. Oh, cool. Just in the nick of time. Energy. Beautiful. Yeah, if Bubble wasn't nerfed hard enough, he was able to get that farm down with the Bubble. And he's going to have a very impactful move if he's running Play Rough or uh, Hydro Pump here. And he might be blind Play Roughing, trying to hit the Umbreon. Uh, and that would be resisted by the Skarmory. And what is this? It is the Ice Beam. Uh, so neutral Ice Beam and Skarmory is going to get a nice farm down, though. Yep, three units of uh, air slash energy there. So J the so J Farm now needs to bear in mind. Now, what's the what's the what's the move set on this Hypno? That's what you need to see. And he, oh, tried to catch it uh, to charge move, and that didn't work out. So uh, G Stun comes in to deal with Umbreon. So let's see how they um, how they play this. Foul play coming off uh, now to do a bit of nice bit of chip damage on the G Stun. So. When the question is, when does the earthquake come from the uh, G stun, or does he catch the shield with a, a rock slide? But second foul play, just to get off as much damage as possible uh, before G stun starts raining in um, their ch uh, his charged moves, as it were, his or her. 
Yeah, and, and at this point, uh, the Umbreon uh, doesn't mind seeing this G Fist because uh, you absolutely do not want to see the Skarmory into that G Fist for Ricky. So this is fantastic for him. So he's going to be racking up these foul plays, and Umbreon's just so thick. And I believe Ricky's Skarmory is one Air Slash away from a Brave Bird. So at this point, he might just be saving his shield for the Skarmory and then trying to Brave Bird that Hypno in the back because even if this Stun Fist KOs this Umbreon, it's going to have a hard time KOing. Oh, but Umbreon's so thick! It's just, oh, man, just taking so everything thrown at it. Beautiful. Umbreon, the OG. OG tank. <laughs> oh my god. And, and the G Fist will go down. The Hypno is going to come in. Skarmory meets it straight away. Oh, oh, but the Hypno is able to get one extra confusion in. And uh, looks like Ricky accidentally throws in one extra air slash. So this Hypno might have back to back fire punches or Thunder Punch. Is oh, Thunder Punch ever punch, enough yeah. to KO the. Is it ever enough? He might get it first. Oh, he does. Oh, no. No, no. So, Brave, uh, that's going to do a huge amount of damage. So, let's see. What we reckon, a KO here, yeah? Boom, yeah. done. Wow. Man, I, you would have to think that uh, J Farm was right at that next Thunder Punch. I'm not sure if Skarmory was in range there, but that was actually a little bit closer than it seems um, if Hypno was somehow able to take out the Skarmory there. Uh, Ricky takes that 1-0. to zero. It made me a little bit nervous there right at the very end. I was like 10 to It's <laughs> like, oh, come on, come on. Oh, wait, no, it's fine. It's cool. All right, calm. We're back to we're centered again. <laughs> so here's the big question, because we only saw one charge move from that Shadow Hypno. Does it have Thunder Punch Shadow Ball, or does it have Thunder Punch Fire Punch? That's the real question that we got to wait for, because we can't see that screen. Right, yeah. right. And uh, you would think Fire Punch uh, would be the best secondary option for him, because Shadow Ball doesn't really hit anything. Uh, super, super effective against Ricky, but I don't know. Maybe they built this. They, he built this team before he saw Ricky's team, so uh, could be the Shadow Ball for sure. Um, let's just get into game number two. Again with that classic. Oh, beautiful! Beautiful matchup here. Skarmory going in against the Surfetch. The Surfetch out as quick as possible, going for that Hypno once again. Uh, now we'll have to see if maybe we can find out what other charge attack it has. Not yeah, it, white that's, uh, that air slash, which it looks like he's gunning for once again here. But it, he's just going to throw the Thunder Punch, not reveal that secondary uh, move yet. But the thing is, Ricky decided to sit the Umbreon on this match. And that's really interesting because now this Hypno safe swap is just much better because it's not going to be met by the Umbreon. The Sky Tech comes in, J Farm decides to shield it, and then now he's swipping, uh, swapping into this Tropius. So we're going to probably find out Hypno's second move right about now. Yeah, surely. If it's not, it must be Fire Punch, or um, if, if he's got it, he'd be throwing Fire Punch now. So let's see. Yes, it is Fire yeah, Punch. Is. Well, oh, he didn't want... Ricky did not want to see Fire Punch running on that Hypno. Uh, but these Leaf Baits are still going to do a huge amount of damage to the, uh, to the Hypno with it being a Shadow. So does the shield come out? It does indeed. Oh. Here is two shields down there for, uh, for J-Farm. We're gonna have to see what uh, what we can try to come up with here. Probably gonna see another fire punch to uh, to end this Tropius, but the shield comes up to save it. So um, it really depends what we see coming. Forward. Yeah, J Farm really investing in the hypno here. You would love to see the fire punch come off or a uh, swap. Sorry, he he did throw the fire punch and it got shielded. You would love to see a swap there right at the end and maybe keep this hypno alive, but. It does get taken out by the Leaf Blade. Tropius has a little bit of health. This is going to be a hard farm down, uh, an impossible farm down, actually. G Fist cannot farm down Tropius. Uh, these mud shots are just resisted so much. And so smartly, J Farm does go through that rock slide. Yeah, just to avoid the Leaf Blade damage on uh, on the G stun, which while isn't going to be a huge amount, it all adds up. So uh, sensible play there to drop the rock slide when he did and just eke out as much uh, energy, uh, just eke it out just before the Leaf Blade hits. So yeah, Azu comes in, uh, natural counter to the, G, uh, to the G stun. But unfortunately, um, uh, unfortunately, Ricky's wise to that and has swept his Skarmory in to deal with the Surfetch. So the question is whether Surfetch can farm down Skarmory in time, but it's a big ask. And, and Surfetch yeah. did have uh, that Night Slash there, so forcing the shield from Ricky, but Ricky was close enough to the Sky Attack. It's going to be able to take out 
um, it's going to be able to take out that surf fetch here. And then we know Azu's in the back. Um, shields are down. But did we see if Ricky has the Hydro Pump? I don't think it will matter either way, but it, it will make it a, a solid win here if uh, Ricky's Azu does have the Hydro Pump. Yeah, def definitely. Um, I'm like I'm trying to rack my memory now, but we're going to find out in a few in a few seconds. Does he get the farm down? No. No, another sky attack. Oh, that's made it even harder for, uh, harder for um for J farm because now the G stun is in closer range to being KO'd, but even by like ice beam and a few bubbles. So, oh yeah, there's no hydro pump. Yeah, no Great hydro catch. pump. Azu does have the Ice Beam. One Ice Beam will be able to take it out. Uh, but even if the next uh, Earthquake lands somehow, fastest Earthquake of his life, Azu's so bulky, it will take that. And the Ice Beam uh, will be able to take out J Farm here. And Ricky wins this one 2-0. to zero. Beautifully done. Ricky is a very, very strong player. I've, I've, I've met him in met him in the past. He's competing in tournaments with him. Not not someone I would enjoy playing up against. <laughs> so yeah, not surprised. Very, very strong player there. Well done, mate. Yeah, and uh, one key thing is uh, Ricky, a real Sylph veteran, leads that Umbreon in game number one, meets it into the Hypno, and then game number two sits the Umbreon all together and leads... Uh, and leads, I believe, that Skarmory into uh, the Surfetch by J Farm there. So just really good mind games uh, by Ricky to just completely take the lead in an open great league. The lead means so much. So Ricky does take that 2-0. Hey guys, yeah. before we get into this next battle, I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Rise to Occasion for the raid, uh, pushing us over 500 viewers. So shout out to you. Shout out to everyone who has followed, who has subbed tonight, and who has uh, rated us. Thank you all for being here. Who's hype for Sylph All-Stars? I believe we have, um, in the Ultra League, King Captain's facing off next. Ooh, Gosh, that, this is going to be fantastic. <laughs> Caleb, and, uh, Caleb Peng, sorry, and House Stark will be a really interesting matchup to see. I'm really excited for this one, especially in the Ultra League. Yeah, two of the greats, two of the real, real, real great. Um, Caleb Peng's um, immortalized so many lineups um, over the years in G uh, over the years in GBL. It's just been fantastic to watch, and how Stark's got reputation of his own to um, to that. Let's looking at the teams. Um, so we can see there's a commonality in the Shadow Machamp there, which is very, very popular in Ultra League. Uh, so I'm not surprised at that at all. What stands out for for you guys, in your opinion? What do you really like the look of? Yeah, um, from Caleb, but to be totally honest, there the only things it lo loses to is Umbreon and Charizard, so it could be a, an interesting matchup, assuming, of course, it, it does have Grass Knot. Yeah, and uh, just a uh, shout out uh, once again to Rise. Uh, yeah, welcome in everyone from that raid. Uh, thanks so much for that raid, Rise. And yeah, the interesting thing is we have Caleb and House Start, two like Sylph veterans, deciding that they're uh their expertise would be best used in Ultra League, which I love to see uh, because I do think, uh, I, I think Ultra League is the best league. I think it's better than Great League at this point uh, for GBL. So I, I love to see this matchup here. And uh, as we were saying before, you can have one starter and one legendary. So Caleb goes with the Venusaur, Cresselia Core, and House Start goes for that Charizard, which I believe is a Dragon Breath Charizard if he didn't switch it up. And then going for not a legendary, but a mythical in that Mel Metal there. Looks like if you compare that. Go, go on, Jolt Switch, you go first, mate. It definitely would be an interesting matchup, especially with, um, I mean, that Shadow Machamp for, uh, for Caleb is going to do some work on that Mel Metal if they happen to get locked in or, or matched up there. Uh, go ahead, Adelia. I was I was looking. You know, um, Butters was describing the two cores with Venusaur Cresselia versus the Charizard Melmetal. So you think so you think on paper uh, how Stark's uh, got an advantage with that particular core, but you um, Jolt Switch, you're right in saying that that the Machamp on Caleb Peng's side uh, is going to cause more problems for that particular Charizard Melmetal um, core uh, because Machamp's Rock Slide. Is so dangerous uh, to the Charizard that even like most, uh, you'll find a lot of players will actually be too so fearful that they'll shield a cross chop or fall for the baits just because they do not want to risk um, blowing their Charizard on uh, on a rock slide. Then I wonder 
even if in such a negative matchup, well, in theory, for Machamp, whether Machamp will be able to flip the momentum by being able to catch the right charge move on the right Pokemon at the right time. So I'm excited to see what magic um, uh, Caleb pulls out of the bag here. <laughs> And, and one have... thing, one last thing before we get started, I think House Stark's Gallade, if you can ever get that Cresselia out of the way, maybe if you can bait out that Cresselia, it just has fantastic matchups across the board. Uh, obviously really good against Shadow Machamp, Venusaur, can do things against the Scavalier, uh, even though those co confusions are resisted, that close combat just chunks the Escavalier. Um, Crazy enough, I think Umbreon only takes like 60% damage from like close combat uh, from a Gallade, which is pretty nuts. But then the Gallade does beat the Lapras as well. So if somehow House Stark can get that Cresselia out of the way, I think a Gallade is going to have a really fun time. It uh, like looks as though it should, but uh, I mean, it really only has coverage against the Machamp and the Venusaur, to be totally honest, with uh, looking at the threat scores here. Oh, the Gallade? Uh, uh, oh, but only... I mean, I has that close combat, man. I mean, it, it it it's good against the Lapras if you could ever get like a confusion or two energy advantage. I know the safe switch Gallade does pick up the Escavalier. I'm pretty sure. So um, I, I feel like it definitely has some good play. I could be wrong, but that's why they're playing and I'm casting. So let's get into the games. <laughs> We are oh, seeing Umbreon against that Togekiss. It could be a really interesting matchup here. That charm, though, if it's if there's one charm down, you know, you got to get out to the Escalavalier. Yeah, not surprised how Stark caught calling it nice and early and then switching to the Escavalier. Togekiss is staying in a little bit against this Escavalier. Um, so Escavalier is now dropping um, so bug type charge move, which I believe is Megahorn. It's double resisted and the, the Togekiss is staying in because uh, Caleb just looks to just completely sack the Escavalier here. Doesn't want to sw safe swap into the Cresselia because wants to keep that Cresselia in the back. Essentially just sacking uh, the Escavalier because the Escavalier is just going to get farmed down and this Togekiss is going to be a little bit less than half health and have some energy. That energy is really going to come up for, uh, up for grabs here to see what, uh, what comes out next. Going for the Cresselia, I'm going to have to see what this Togekiss is going to start throwing. Yeah, and what's interesting as well is um, the Cresselia has got Future Sight and Moonblast, and now this Melmetal is going to wall Cresselia to high heaven, so this is going to be very tricky now for this Cresselia. He is relying on getting a few debuffs on the attack with Moonblast, so let's see. And oh it does my get one. god! Big, big deal there. He instantly gets, he went for the, the, the greedy Moonblast and said Future Sight to try to roll the dice on that debuff. He gets it. And then Caleb swaps into the Umbreon on that Rock Slide. So wasting that Rock Slide damage. Look at, look at how little that Rock Slide plus Thundershocks is doing. And now Caleb builds up to the back-to-back -back foul plays here. And even if Hal Stark gets these superpowers, how much will a debuff superpower even do against an Umbreon? I think it will probably, yeah, it won't. Uh, certainly doing even with two superpowers back to back it wouldn't work and um another rock slide's coming in from melmetal instead to try and lure a shield and it does not work oh. for the superpower now. this now, could I'll... do some damage to the shield but again he is debuffed so that really really depends on what happens oh my god umbreon oh. so tanky look how little that thing did and now uh looked like caleb was trying to count perfectly and get to that foul play right before the superpower but one thunder shock off so uh, how Stark is yeah. able to sneak in one more superpower? Oof, just and he's perfect, uh, perfect planning of how much damage that superpower was going to do to not shield and then launch those foul plays. And this foul play goes on unshielded, and the Melmetal goes down. Togek is coming back into KO and straight into the Cresselia. Um, so catches the charge move, um, but it is a flamethrower here rather than uh, the ancient power. Um, but still not too much damage, but it all adds up. So let's see how much Cresselia will farm up before launching its uh, Moonblast. And we do see Cresselia running the Moonblast and Future Sight, so no cheap Grass Knot. Oh, but he lets the Togekiss go. I thought maybe he would double shield it, but he just has his own Umbreon in the back. And uh, like in Queen's Gambit, uh, you resign now. I believe uh, <laughs> House Stark has this in the bag. Yeah, I think it's now play continuing to play for honor more than anything. <laughs> it's not over to over, but yeah, the, the with the shield with the even shields, it's Umbreon can tank a Moonblast easily, but Cresselia's not tanking anything with that low amount of health, sadly. 
and, really? and Joel Switch, you were completely right there. Uh, no Gallade to be seen. Uh, wasn't doing it enough uh, for House Stark. House Stark really relying on that Togekiss, um, and then obviously having that Mel Metal Umbreon in the back uh, for the Cresselia. Really not having a bad matchup for the Cresselia, which I think was a great play by House Stark. Looks like I he's want gonna tank this blast and and just hang on with a shield because now he's got shield advantage. Um, we'll have to see what if he can get to. He can get to the last resort, um, but we're gonna see one coming from the other side, and it's not gonna go shielded, so it could do quite a bit of damage, unfortunately. Well, actually, it was a lot less not than too, I was not too, Yeah, not too much. Yeah. Is this House what? Stark going for the farm down now? Look at this. Look, he's oh. so bulky with his Umbreon. He could care less oh. about charge moves. He's just going to snarl his way uh, to killing this Umbreon and then just double foul play this Cresselia for the win. Well, it's, Maybe uh, even House single foul play. Well, House Stark's, um, House Stark's uh, Umbreon yeah, is a little play. higher C CP, so um, uh, I wonder if that's uh, influencing the slightly higher bulk there. It's very marginal, of course, but um, you can see it's 2445 rather than 2416 um, on the Umbreon. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting match. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Classic Ultra League, almost going to the timeout. Like it actually was a buzzer beater. If if like it was one second later, uh, and the Cresselia ever had just a little bit more health than the Ubriad, uh Caleb could have actually won that. And uh, yeah, how Stark's team comp was just overwhelming, leading that Togekiss, and uh, Caleb led the Umbreon and had the Escavalier just basically sack the Escavalier and tried to uh, put all its faith in the Cresselia Umbreon core in the back, but just wasn't enough. Um, so 1-0 for House Stark here. Going to be interesting to see what they try to tweak moving forward. Seeing that shift in Cresselia to Future Sight as opposed to the Grass Knot, it does provide still some amazing coverage across the board here, only losing to Umbreon, as we saw there, as well as Shadow Machamp, which could be an interesting matchup. That's, I assume, if it has payback from Community Day. Oh, yeah, we didn't yeah. think of that. I didn't think of that. <laughs> now, that's inter now, that is interesting. I um, also think Escavalier may not be quite as good a counter on Caleb's team to the Togekiss because of the move set it is running. And I believe both moves have now been revealed to Hal Stark, so he'll know, know that. So maybe the only real counter to the Togekiss um, potentially will be that Venusaur in terms of walling and resisting the charms. So we'll see if that Venusaur turns up or not in the next map, but hey-ho. Yeah, and that Lapras actually looking quite nice too. That's true. Yeah, very true. Ooh, okay, that's a good lead. Okay, let me look at this. Immediate switch out, no surprises there. There's that Gallade. <laughs> <laughs> that safe swap Gallade, but at this point, uh, the safe swap Gallade was like met with literally the only thing it didn't want to see from Caleb's line, and that is the Cresselia. These confusions really not doing that much, and at this point, there is the Moonblast and the Future Sight here for Caleb, and he does decide to just go for this Moonblast, and how much will this do on the Gallade? I never see this matchup. Oof, a lot of damage. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> uh, Gallade's rethinking its life choices here. Uh, that's <laughs> probably well, the credit to Hal Stark, he's able to get a second uh, Leaf Blade off on the Gallade to do a little bit of chip damage on that Cresselia. It's not a lot, but it'll do. And will the farm down come in here, I wonder? That's gonna and be yes. Oh, no! Ooh. We know Ooh. how Stark has the great IVs and this Gallade, probably a rank one, getting that last Leaf Blade off and almost killing this Cresselia. But this Cresselia does come out with a bunch of energy, and there's nothing to soak the energy. There's only Umbreon and Togekiss, so this Moonblast is going to be super effective, really chunking the Umbreon. Oh, buddy. It's just so much bulk on that. Umbreon is insane. It's, it's going to be a dominant force in Ultra League, for sure. A second Moonblast coming now. Um, is there going to be a debuff on the attack, I wonder? That might be another lucky thing on um, how Stark's... Oh, sorry, on um, Kylo's perspective, so let's see. Yeah, and I think at this point, at this point, sorry uh, to interrupt, but I think uh, uh, How Stark is looking for the double shield Togekiss line. But guess what? Caleb's got that Lapras. Ah, uh, yes, and here it comes. Ooh. And even better, it's an Ice Beam um, Lapras as well, so um, doesn't have to rush all the way to the uh, to Skull Bash. Um, Maybe here, they, if you notice, Lapras has counted up to seven. So I wonder if he was trying to fool people and thinking it was a Surf. 
um, the foot, the bait did work in this occasion. Maybe to follow next in the next time uh, the charge move is launched, he's going to go for an ice beam and try and catch uh, House Stark out. But we'll see if House Stark falls for it. Curious. Both down a shield now, getting that super effective attack off with ancient power for the Togekiss. Back to another serve for the Lapras. Uh, will we see a shield? Doesn't look like yeah. it. So well, it does last blast. minute. I think yeah, and he has to at this KO'd. point, but will he get to that surf first and he just outpaces with the Lapras? He just gets yeah. to that surf. Two shield Lapras is just too much for the Togekiss. Caleb playing, really calling uh, House Stark's line here, uh, countering him completely, has this Escavalier in the back for this low health Umbreon, and he switches on the foul play. The foul play is neutral, but at this point, uh, Caleb can just uh, shield this uh, and get to a drill run and just take this game number two. I don't know if the Machamps uh, have payback, but Caleb definitely does because he gets payback in game number two, and uh, it's <laughs> one to one Caleb versus House Stark. Whether or not they have it, this one was definitely super effective. <laughs> <laughs> wow, fa fantastic plays. Um, House Stark uh, deciding that Toei Kiss is really good. Caleb Peng, uh adjusting with that Lapras in the back and able to call the lead with the Escavalier into the Umbreon thinking that House Stark will not lead the Togekiss two times in a row. At this point, there's two amazing battlers with some mon games, and uh, who's going to get that lead in game number three? That's really what it boils down to here. I mean, in, in any of the leagues, if you can get the lead and you know what's, what's coming, it's, uh, it becomes a rough day really, really quickly. But uh, really excited to see what these guys pull out in the next round and see, if, uh, see who gets payback this time. Oh, okay. So Caleb has a slight advantage with that surf um, coming from the Lapras, and this is a Dragon Breath Charizard, which is even better in uh, even better for the Lapras. It tries to catch the surf out and doesn't manage it. And here comes Escavalier to deal with the Umbreon. So this is not looking great so far for Hal Stark. Well, let's see if he can flip it around in the mid game. Power play coming out now. You know, you know one thing though by safe swapping this Umbreon. I believe that House Stark has the Melmetal in the back, so he's essentially baiting out this Escavalier, and maybe that Melmetal for House Stark can put in some work. Here comes the Megahorn. How much is the Megahorn going to do? But no, House Stark does decide to shield that one. Uh, maybe at this point, he will get the two foul plays before the Escavalier gets to the next Megahorn. Yeah, that's a good play, although the shields come out for the second foul play. So yeah, let's. it's now a race to see, can another Megahorn come out or not? Uh, Looks like those yeah. snows are going to get him there in time. Yep, and well timed by the Umbreon there, just perfectly timing it to get um, uh, to get the foul play off before the Megahorn energy is there. Uh, Caleb decides to shield again in order to ensure that Megahorn goes through. Will he bait or will he sh will he drop the Megahorn? He's baiting. So will the shield come out to take the bait or not? Man, Umbreon safe switch is actually just nuts. Even though he's taking super effective counter damage, he's getting to this next foul play. And you have to imagine this foul play is just going to kill the Escavalier. And now uh, it looks like Hal Stark has taken swap. And plus, he has Melmetal in the back, which Cresselia and Lapras are not good against. And this Lapras comes in, doesn't want to mess around, goes for that surf, takes out the Umbreon. And you have to imagine that now the uh, Melmetal is going to come in and just uh, be able to... Oh, but he... Doesn't does he undercharge that, or is that just Umbreon's bulk? That's Umbreon's bulk. That was beautiful. Oh, man. Oh, Going this is looking rough. Gosh. Umbreon's bulk is just blowing my mind here. Uh, this thing is just so uh, defense-weighted, and uh, Caleb is able to get that farm down, and now he has a Surf, throwing the Surf onto this Melmetal here. He should get to that next Surf, because he did get those extra Ice Shards advantages. Um, and uh, let's see if Melmetal decides to throw a Rock Slide, or if he d goes Super Power Dip Out. And one more Surf coming in, so now How Stark is trying to get as much farm as he can with these resisted Ice Shards, but he cannot get too greedy. He cannot let one more Surf through, and Caleb could try to switch something. Yeah, that's what I'm looking, keeping an eye out for. Does he do it or not? No, he doesn't. Uh, Caleb doesn't switch out because it's really hard to like just no, just have a sort of judgment guess as to when to switch. So it's really tricky to pull that off um, in those situations. Oh, this is going to be tough. That looked like it landed but didn't do any damage. That's definitely an odd one. Um, we are seeing, of course, that rock slide landing on Cresselia because these guys are out of shields and Cresselia is uh, thicker than a snicker there. 
I think you were. I think um, yeah, the animation showed that it didn't land, but I think it did secure the KO because there's only one Pokemon left on uh, Caleb's side. Blossman coming in, respectable amount of damage. Cresselia is very bulky here. So wait, uh, wait a second, wait a second, guys. Wait, is Cresselia out of Rock Slide range? Cresselia could live a Rock Slide if. Oh no, but the Charizard lives this. So the Charizard gets to this this Dragon Claw, uh, which it will. Okay, Charizard gets to that dra Dragon Claw with the Dragon Breast, and how Stark is going to be able to take this two to one? Just in the nick of time, landing that. Oh, it survives though. Wow, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Talk about thick. Cresselia's thick itself, <laughs> and it just throws the Moon Blast. Uh, and then it's going to get one thunder shock down in Mel Metal and uh, how Stark uh, gets that two to one and to even it up. Now Seven Wonders is tied with the primes here. Oh, I thought I genuinely thought I genuinely thought that um, that Dragon Claw would KO that I just like it didn't cross my mind that oh it's going to survive. So yeah, small small margins, but and in the end it was somewhat inconsequential sadly because the Mel Metal in the back was just too good. Uh, get once the counter to um, that steel type was eliminated with Escavalier going down. So really good play. It's a sort of ABB um, a sort of a layout that you often see in certain GBL lineups um, where to lure out the counter, destroy the counter, bring in the second thing that there is no counter towards. So yeah, really good play. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, how Stark had that in his back pocket the whole time. Uh, now looking back, like, how do you stop that Umbreon Say Swap? If the Umbreon Say Swap just beats the Scavalier and the two shield, how do you even stop that thing? That thing is 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 strong. Uh, uh, yeah, man, that thing is just thick. But tying it up two to two, let's get on to the next matchup. Ooh, Me Fizz versus a Sono Roman. And they are Me playing in the Master League, so that's going to be uh, two big, big, or lineups of big, big Pokemon. Now, an interesting pick that I'm seeing from Sonoroman is that Garchomp. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, that's that is a very good, very good point because you don't normally when you look see Garchomp, you're thinking Master League Premier, but this is in a um, this is in a lineup where you can have the odd legendary and Memphis does have the uh, Giratina. Now I'd be curious to see if it's running the uh, Shadow Claw or Dragon Breath uh, fast move because that will determine how good it will be against the Garchomp. But that Garchomp does a huge amount of damage when it's lined up with the right things. So. Yeah, that'll be exciting to uh, see how the, how Sonoroman uh, lines that up correctly. Yeah, the interesting move. decision from uh, these Master League uh, specialists. No one's bringing a Dialga, uh, a Jolt Switch. Depending on the move sets, of course, the only thing that uh, Garchomp really does any work against is the Metagross. Um, it's under 100 threat score, under 50 threat score against a Togekiss, under 100 for Gyarados and Dragonite, so, uh, and then Giratina as well as Excadrill do, do quite a bit of damage too. So it's uh, an interesting pick. It catch some people off guard if you don't know how to take it, but uh, I mean, these guys are pros, so you never know. Just just out of curiosity, Joel Switch, what, how is the Mel Metal uh, looking for uh, Sonora Man? I, I feel like that has really good coverage versus all of Mephiz's team. Four of six. The only two it loses to is Excadrill, and it's got less than 100 threat score, and the Giratina. So that's uh, something that we could be uh, could be interesting to see. Again, it all does depend on movesets. I'm making huge assumptions because I right. don't have that information quite yet. I do adjust as we see, but um, with the sort of automatically given moves, things that you usually see, it uh, takes out that Gyarados, Dragonite, Metagross, and Togekiss by the looks of it here. You, right. brought up, you brought up Excadrill as well. If, um, if recently the moveset was updated on Excadrill, so it now has Mudshot as well. So it's kind of almost in a way that you can draw a parallel with it and uh, Galarian Stunfisk, uh, where Excadrill is like the very frail but way more damaged version um, of G Stun, uh, being able to have excellent coverage with Rock Slide and Drill Run. So uh, I'll be curious to see how much damage it can churn out against the right thing at the right time. So. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Excadrill in action in particular. And, and one thing also, oh, go go for it, Joel Switch. Excadrill's only threat here seems to be the Swampert, so that we might see quite a bit of it depending on how they make that adjustment or how they make that pick. Uh, it could be really interesting to see it in the Master League itself, Butters. Right, and the also Mif is rocking no fighting types. 
So you can safely put Melmetal and Snorlax together. Snorlax is very neutral in a safe swap against like everything here. Um, I think Snorlax is looking quite good. I think Mel Melmetal, Snorlax, both with that superpower coverage, trying to gang up uh, on that Exadrill, maybe doing some uh, superpowers and dips kind of strategy. I think that's looking quite nice for Sonora Man. But without further ado, uh, it's tied two to two in these semifinals uh, between uh, the Primes and the Seven Wonders. Let's get into the Master League Specialists. So Norman leading with that uh, that Mel Metal, and we're seeing Gyarados from Mephis Flow switches out right away because that the Thundershock is going to be doing double super effective going for the Swampert for Sonora Man, which is going to be doing some work on this uh, lovely shiny Metagross here. Yeah, it's Sonora Man is rocking the Mel Metal and Snorlax and that Swampert, and that Swampert is meeting into the Metagross. This Metagross is going to get to an Earthquake, which is very impactful. We're going to see if how much Sonora Man values the Swampert. It can barely survive and get to the next Hydro Cannon, but at that point, the Melmetal could shield and farm down, I think. Definitely a crazy, crazy twist to not shield that first one, because you, you know it's going to do a ton of damage, but he may have thought it was that... Uh... Oh, he, he does. He does shield that. He does shield that, and he is going for the farm down. Does he get it? Or does the Swampert barely gets to the next Hydro Cannon? That Swampert oh, barely gets to the next Hydro Cannon. Double shield by Mephiz here. I think he has to because he's going to struggle to deal with that Melmetal without the um, Metagross's Earthquake around there. But I imagine the Snorlax is going to come out here potentially, or what do you, what do you reckon? Yeah, I, I would have to say the Snorlax is probably coming out to lick yeah. down, and here it comes. But the thing is, at least this Metagross used two shields, but it's going to get one right back, I think. Uh, so it's probably going to get a shield from the Snorlax, which it does. And at this point, can he ever get to one more Meteor Mash before he gets licked down? It's going to be quite close. These licks are adding up. Is he going to get there? It's going to be so close. Does he barely get there? And he does! Just... He barely gets Oof. to the last, Metagro or the last Meteor Mash. Wow. Man, Snorlax not even going for a charge attack. That... Definitely a crazy move, but uh, Snorlax, of course, again, super thick, especially in the Master League, can take a whole ton of damage. And now we're seeing we're seeing that Gyarados come on back, uh, going for the Body Slams here. He might be able to get a couple in because uh, a few more licks, and he's uh, back to the center of that lollipop. Yeah, that's, yeah, like, then that's the... the play. Go, uh, go, uh, go, go on, Body, sorry. Oh, man, and now that there's one shield left for this Melmetal, this is going to be interesting. Exodrill is quite squishy, so he's going for these back-to-back -back uh, superpowers here. Uh, Exodrill's squishy. How much is this going to do? You would have to think Exodrill does win the CMP, but oh my god, that superpower does so much. And there goes the CMP. It's going to be shielded by the Melmetal, but this superpower is going to take out the uh, Exadrill and this Melmetal just needs to get to a rock slide. And what is this timer looking like? Can he ever switch out back to the Snorlax? And the Snorlax almost has a body slam itself. Man. Play of des play a play of desperation somewhere here. One thing I also noticed, and I don't know if I if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but that to me that looked like a mud slap Exadrill rather than a mud shot. But I'd probably want to have a proper look at that um, that fast move again, just judging from my poor uh, judgment of the animation. So I wonder if that changes anything as well, because I was expecting a mud shot uh, mud shot Exadrill there. Um, oh my god! Timed. Beautiful, beautiful. What a swap! onto the Snorlax. The Snorlax is going to absorb this crunch and live it, and then get to the Body Slam himself. Great play uh, by Sonora Man there. Um, running the double, the Melmetal Snorlax double weak defying versus Mephiz's double steal of Metagross Exadrill, which almost pulled it off. Baited out the Swampert, double shielded, was able to get a shield back and a huge chunk on the Snorlax, but Exadrill, just so squishy, taking enormous damage from that superpower on the Melmetal. An amazing, amazing matchup. And again, always interesting to see what happens in that Master League itself. Um, hoping that, of course, everyone's got their, their hundos lined up, of course. Um, but I mean, this is... We're going to have to see what they do in the next round to, to try and counteract sort of everything that we've, that we've seen. Uh, so Norman doesn't have to make too many adjustments, but... Um, does need to keep in mind, of course, Mephis could make something change um, to shift everything in one swift move. Yeah, Mephis was the, um, I think he was the European Continental Champion the last, um, uh, in last season of the Silver Arena. So uh, he's certainly not a player to be underestimated, nor is Sonoraman, to be fair. Uh, so yeah, I'd be interested to see how Mephis shifts 
in order to try and adjust and deal with the sort of Melmetal Snorlax core being that he's put up against. So yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was quite close actually in the end because the, the Mephiz was trying to farm up all the way to a crunch and an Aqua Tail so that he could crunch that Melmetal and then get to the Aqua Tail against the Snorlax. But Sonora Man reading that and just amazing swap to absorb that crunch onto the Snorlax and then uh, just outpacing him uh, on that undercharge, I believe, and getting to that body slam. But uh, yeah, uh, Mephiz uh, down 0 to 1. Uh, let's see what game number two has in store. Ooh. So now man leading with that Excadrill and we're seeing Mel Metal for Mephis once again here. We'll have to see what's uh now can we tell if that is a mud slap? That, or a that mud is shot? that's definitely mud shot. Yeah, that's definitely mud shot because mud slap is a three would be a three turn move. I think mud shot's uh two, so a little bit quicker. Drill run coming in, which makes sense, does a bit more damage with the stab. Snorlax is gonna tank it and respectable amount of damage considering Snorlax bulk to Exodrill to pull that off is pretty good. Dragonite comes in now to um, wall the potential superpower that may have come, but Snorlax drops the body slam instead, which is the sensible play. Uh, so how much damage does this do? What do you reckon? He, he, he does get all the way up to like outrage energy, but the fact that he showed that he had superpower, or I don't know actually if he did show superpower last game. Maybe he never showed superpower. So uh, uh, Mifa is just calling that there is no outrage, that he is running the body slam superpower and just letting those body slams go. And then at this point, he gets a little bit greedy and just saves onto those dragon claws and has to take one more body slam and he's not going to shield it. No, he does shield it last second. Yeah, it makes it makes sense to do so. But yes, you're right. A little bit get a li little bit greedy there. It's very hard to predict with the one turn moves um, whether to uh, when to like time it. So yeah, that's a tricky one. A lot of energy loaded on this Dragonite though. So what comes in in response is the question. Will it be the Melmetal to wall the Dragonite somewhat? It is. Yeah, well, Melmetal looking to sponge up this energy. Going to take the big Hurricane, but uh, this Melmetal is going to get a full farm down. Uh, it might have to take one more Dragon Claw, but that's not the end of the world. It, you'd rather get this impactful energy uh, for Sonora Man. Then again, the Melmetal decided to drop the Rock Slider early oh, because I think he was counting to see that Hurricane coming, coming in. Sorry, Jolt Switch, you were saying, mate. Not charging that attack, but he didn't need to to end that game. That was uh, interesting to not see him hit any bubbles on that move, or... That was uh, definitely a weird one. But uh, we can see that the Gyarados itself is going for the crunch. Uh, it is going to be doing super effective damage on this uh, dragon and ghost type here. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. And that uh, that crunch is going to do quite a bit of work when he gets mm -hmm. to it there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these dragon breaths are just adding up uh, onto this Giratina uh, for Sonora Man here. Uh, these, and then, like you said, the crunch is super effective. He's just trying to count these... Uh, Shadow Claws going for the crunch here, and looks like uh, Mephiz is just gonna let this crunch go. Ooh, a lot of damage there. I think it's so bulky though. Giratina yeah. is so bulky, and I was thrown off a little bit because I think the POVs are a little switch. Uh, so Mephiz is on the left here, and uh, Sonora Man is on the right. So uh, Sonora Man does throw the Aqua Tail to take out uh. Mephiz is Giratina there, and then going for the next Aqua Tail, which is going to have to be shielded because we saw how squishy Exadrill is, and this Aqua Tail is super effective, and he's going to have to be very, very careful on this farming here. Yeah, definitely. He needs to time this to perfection. Uh, and he decided to play, play it less risky and just drop the Rock Slide nice and early. Shield comes through. He's underpowering a little. And if you yeah. notice, uh, they were trying to, he was trying to swap out. Uh, the Gyarados was trying to swap out. He was pressing on his button, trying to swap out on the Rock Slide to catch mm -hmm. it onto the Melmetal here. And now no shields left for this uh, Exadrill. And how much energy does this Melmetal have? He has to get all the way to the superpower. He's not getting there in time. I hope that drill yeah. run is going to tear through the Melmetal now. So this is going to be a really heavy hit. Sorry, Jolt Switch, you were saying. I was just excited at what we're seeing here. This ton of damage, like you said, on that, uh, that poor Mel Melmetal that... Uh, I was unfortunately expecting that ground type attack to come on through. Yeah, really well played by um, Mephiz there to tie it up. Uh, so it's one to one Sonora Man to Mephiz. Um, Exadrill just putting in work in the back. Uh, and uh, that Dragonite to match the, the Snorlax's safe swap. Uh, Mephiz really had a plan to uh, counter the previous strat from Sonora Man. But I believe um, Sonora Man did decide to sit the Swampert. Let's see if he brings back that Swampert in game number three. There we are. We've got uh, 
a toe kiss mirror match one does have that best buddy ribbon so i mean it could do a little bit more uh, but they both got the same cp so that's a uh, an interesting matchup to say the least uh, and, and they, they already don't... are desynced it looks like i don't know if you've noticed that at Deleon. they're not charming they're not dancing at the same pace here Yes, that's very true. Yeah, I, um, that that that's thrown me a little bit. One other thing that also is interesting is um, the Toga uh, Mephis Toga is running Ancient Power, whereas um, uh, Sonoramans one is running Aerial Ace. So I wonder if that will help with the super effective damage. There is a shield coming out for this Ancient Power. No, it is not. Uh, so is there any proc? There is a proc. Oh Ooh. my god! Gets By the way, it does look like our viewpoints are swapped again. Oh, does uh, it? The one on the right has the Swampert. Ah. <laughs> right. So the the one on the right is Sonora Man. He does have the Swampert. Uh, it's going to be uh, the uh, the Metagross does farm down with that Bullet Punch here. And then you have to imagine here comes the Swampert. Swampert does come in and he has the Gyarados in the back as well. And he's going to swap into the Gyarados meeting uh, the Giratina. A matchup you don't see a ton because uh, they usually play in different leagues. Yeah. You see Gyarados a lot more in uh, in uh, Master League Premier, uh, whereas Giratina, we will see more of the origin form in Master in Master League normally in the classic. Uh, but this the this bulky uh, alter, uh, altered form of Giratina is able to tank a lot of a uh, lot of extra damage here. But Gyarados still might have the slight upper hand. Um, I believe the Shadow Claw variant also deals a little less damage on the with its fast moves compared to the Dragon Bent variety, but I think I need to check my stats. Jolt Switch is more wiser than me in this regard. <laughs> and that Dragon Bent move does through it really, really quickly and gets to the Dark type um, crunch, of course, which um, is everything you sort of need against this uh, this poor Giratina, especially with. Uh, uh, I mean, he doesn't have the shield advantage, which does kind of throw things a little bit in an opposite direction, but. It all does depend if he wants to invest those shields. Uh, as we can see, he doesn't, which means he's uh, going to be moving to that last and, mod. And yeah. Mephis was going for the farm down on the Gyarados, but doesn't quite get it. And here comes the Hydra Cannon. But at this point, Mephis is looking good. Mephis can let this one go, calls it since a Hydra Cannon. He can get to this Earthquake and possibly farm down this Swampert. He's going to have to shield this one, but he gets to the Earthquake first. This doesn't quite kill the Swampert, but uh, if... If he shields this Hydra Cannon, I think he's going to get the farm down, and he might be able to farm down the Gyarados as well. Oh, that would be very, very cool if that if he can do that, especially with Bullet Punch being resisted by um by both Gyarados and Swampert. It's a big ask, but yeah, it's the, it would be oh, the no, play. But Sonora Man's Swampert looks to be too tanky, not going to be able to get farmed down here, and oh. Sonora Man is going to barely get to that last Hydra Cannon, able to take out Mephiz. Uh, Mephiz... Uh, Throwing up his screen there, maybe a little frustration. Uh, Sonora Man with the Swampert able to take out the Metagross and take it uh, two to one for Team The Primes. Really, really good plays there. Wow, yeah, for... definitely some interesting matchups there for uh, for each of them. I mean, uh, things expected, things unexpected. Um, those shields coming out at the right times in the right situations. It's it's been a crazy play, especially to see Mephis. I mean. He was, he is ranked number one in Austria at this point. He was ranked number one at the end of last season, ranked 42 in the world at the end of last season, and uh, still has can run into some issues if you're if you're not uh, not seeing things, not counting things right, not used to Master League, can always throw a bit of a monkey wrench into every plan. Yeah, and I I think like the uh, the Swamper just to counter that double steal that we were seeing a lot. Um, from Mephiz, which is so good for Sonora Man. So uh, he was able to pick that one up. And next, we do have Sodmon versus Ali Lucky. And I believe our next two um, competitors will be back to the Sylph Specialists. Um, uh, and here we go with Sodman, of course, uh, rocking the uh, Articuno Drift Bloom, as Caleb says. <laughs> and then Ali Lucky bringing the Wigglytuff, which is the first Wigglytuff we have seen today. That's going to be interesting. Just go on, Charles. Definitely, definitely. definitely an interesting matchup there. Wigglytuff actually takes half of the lineup there for him. Um, but Articuno, like you mentioned earlier, it, it just runs through everything, so it's not even there. Um, quite a bit. I mean, 600 threat scores sort of across the board, but I mean, showing wins against all six of your opponent's Pokemon is, uh, needless to say, a, a safe switch nonetheless. 
Interesting. Yeah. Mantine as well from uh, Sodman's um, from Sodman's lineup, as it were, because most uh, most uh, you see most uh, floating city lineups tend to have Pelipper in there, but we've gone for something a little bit different, a bit more bulk offered with Mantine and also the ice coverage there, which can cause an impact with the other flyers if uh, Articuno has fallen earlier on in the fight. So um, I am interested to see how Mantine plays up against the against the meta. Can also farm down. Uh, so you can also wall and farm Swampert quite nicely. Uh, so Ali's going to have to be very careful to not line the Swampert up against Mantine, ideally. And what stops Sodman from rocking three flyers? I mean, I know uh, Ali's got the Ferrothorn with that Thunder, which would be quite good versus the three flyers, but no electric type. Um, the three flyers are just looking so strong for uh, Sodman here. Uh, you could always go with the Wigglytuff, uh, try to match that up with the Drift Limb. Uh, you double, uh, you resist those hexes, so you can have a decent matchup there. Um, obviously, Swampert, uh, like Jolt Switch was saying, is kind of like the king of this meta. So if, if she can ever get it with some energy advantage or some shields, that can always put in work. But uh, the double Icy Winders of the Articuno Drift Limb core which we've seen a lot from Team The Primes, has just been deadly so far. And uh, we'll have to see how the Seven Wonders are going to adjust. Let's go ahead and just take it to the games. Yep, and there it is. Uh, we're already in the game, <laughs> but it's the Articuno versus the Vigoroth. And we do see uh, Mantine and Ferrothorn in the back for Sodman. So not running those triple flyers. Uh, Articuno is using that shield right away to block off that body slam from Vigoroth. Uh, I mean, that that body slam just charges so quickly, and it looks as though he's going for a... I think that's a close combat I saw, but Icy Wind coming out first, uh, being able to help to debuff a little bit on that Vig. Yeah, it's another body slam. I think, body yeah, slam. Vigoroth's running cross chop as its second move um, uh, to deal perhaps even more aggressively with any counter, uh, any other fighters. Wiggly comes in, what comes in to defend it? Ferrothorn, very nice, nicely done. That's a nice matchup we want to see from Sodman's perspective, the steel walling that fairy. So this is Farm City now for uh, Sodman, just able to get two power whips worth of energy. Um, and so launches the first one, it shouldn't KO, so the shield doesn't come out. And then let's see if uh, Sodman decides to Ali is at that ice beam. Ali's at that ice beam and we will get that ice beam off first to uh, threaten this fair thorn a little bit, at least. And now you're right. It is going to be far city, farm city. So how much does Sodman decide to farm this Wigglytuff before it throws? These charms are just adding up. There isn't going to be much more farm. So one power whip is going to go through. And I, I think actually uh, now Ali could just bring in the Vigroth and counter down this fair thorn before it gets to another move. Yes, I think you're right about that because the counter's in two shots. Oh, Ooh. he's bringing in the mirror. Okay. Bold. Right. Okay, we like it. Definitely an interesting move there. We'll be able to see him get some energy uh, onto it itself. Sorry, get her, see her get some energy on there. Um, definitely an interesting matchup. Uh, Vigoroth would be sitting on a brick break. I know we were kind of um, wondering what the fighting type attack is because uh, who uses it? But uh, we'll be able to see a little bit of that in a, a moment uh, once, uh, I mean, if this Feral Thorn ever happens to drop against this, uh, this Articuno. And Ali went so. for that big farm down and has two shields here for the Feral Thorn. For the Feral Thorn, is going to be the closer here. Going for that Power Whip, it is res resisted and debuffed, but it doesn't matter. And then swap into the Vigoroth to get that Icy Wind debuff off and just get to this Body Slam first. And now this Mantine is going to let that go and... You can't really go for a full farm down because Mantine's fast attack does not do enough damage. So it looks like Sodman is going to have to count properly before it even throws the bubble beam. And it does throw the bubble beam there. Maybe one counter too early, but you never want to be too sure because you can always sneak in a counter animation and not notice. Yeah, absolutely, especially with Bubble being a three-turn move. And actually, he does manage to get a bubble, an extra bubble in, so it didn't yeah. quite... It was That was still sensible. It was a good play. And here comes the uh, Ferrothorn now, and will he time it before the Thunder lands? Yes, he does. He's decided to go straight for the Ice Beam rather than uh, offer any debuffs, which is, uh, makes sense. Doesn't Goes unshielded, which is even better. Get the yeah, Thunder. It... It's going to land unless we get a shield, which we probably will. I mean, last Pokemon, of course, you're going to shield just to make sure. But goes for that Leaf Blade. Oh, my goodness. Power Whip. Yeah. I apologize. 
Yeah, and at this point, the Mantine is just in big trouble going for the bait here uh, with the Bubble Beam and is shielded by uh, Allie. And Allie with two shields with Ferrothorn in the back has just been so deadly versus Sodman's team. The one answer to those Flyers. And here comes the next uh, move, and it is the Thunder getting all the way to the Thunder. Uh, it doesn't matter how many Bubble Beams you throw. Thunder is double super affected, takes out the uh, Mantine, and Ali Lucky taking game number one. I really like that strat of, of saving two shields in the back for Ferrothorn because of how deadly Sildman's flying is against everyone else. Uh, great, great plays, um, especially getting that big farm down uh, on the opposing Ferrothorn for Ali there. Absolutely fantastic plays there. We saw the Wigglytuff come out as well. And, and even though that was in a, in a negative matchup against the Ferrothorn, it, what was good is that it brought Sodman's Ferrothorn out nice and early so that um, it was not too weak to defend itself against Ali's Ferrothorn later on in the game. So, yeah, very, very tactical play there. Really enjoyed that. Yeah, and it weirdly wasn't too bad also. Like, uh, she safe swapped that Wigglytuff um and didn't give up a shield and just landed that ice beam and that ferrothorn was almost dead by the end of it um and wasn't uh wasn't was able to get one move off but obviously gets just gets sponged up by uh ali's uh ferrothorn so that safe swift wigglytuff actually just put in some work um mm. for ali there so let's get into game number two looks like we've got the same matchup here uh articuno there for sardman ali Rocking that bigger off once again, getting to those body slams really quickly, counter adding up in energy really quickly as well. Articuno doing that first shield, probably going to go to the icy wind again and, and not have to worry about it in the future. Charged up halfway to the next icy wind, getting this one off. We're not going to see a shield for the Vigoroth to keep it uh, alive or at least decently well, but uh, getting that debuff on the attack, switching out to remove it, going for the Wigglytuff, switching into Mantine. This could be an interesting move with the bubble beam probably reducing the charm damage uh, could really provide some help. Uh, going for the ice beam though could be really yeah. So this this move. this played out exactly the same thing way as the first game. Uh, the Articuno shielding that first body slam and then Ali safe swapping the Wigglytuff and getting to this uh, play rough here. But the difference is Sodmon adjusted in bringing the Mantine to. Uh, take on this Wigglytuff instead of the Ferrothorn and uh, having the Vigroth in the back for that two-shielded uh, Ferrothorn for Ali here. So what's going to stop this Vigroth? This Vigroth is just going to go off and he's going to get the full farm down and he's going to be met with a, a Ferrothorn in the back and a low health uh, Vigroth. But actually that Vigroth took so much damage from the charm. Oh, this yeah. is going to be really to see what comes forward. That I mean, both figure out they're low on health, but we've got a body slam coming right away. Uh, will he invest the shield, or, or is he going to just tough it out? And, and oh, there's the shield. There it is. Wants to keep him alive. And so get two body slams off back to back and deal with the uh, Vigoroth there, or at least force both shields to come from Ali's side. Uh, first shield is consumed. Will the second one be launched straight away? Oh, switch out instead. Okay, fair enough. And then this is the Ferrothorn, the very dangerous Ferrothorn running Thunder as well. So Icy Winds are coming in to try and debuff that. But I think even with one debuff, the Thunder is going to be a huge threat to any flying type. So we need a bit more oomph than that. Oh. Yeah, um, and so yeah. decides to go for the Icy Wind instead of going for the big Thunder. The big, or sorry, the big Hurricane, Hurricane which could have yeah. really damaged that Ferrothorn. and doesn't get to the second Icy Wind before the Thunder. And the Thunder just takes it out. And now we have the Vigoroth. But there's a shield left. He needs to get to two body slams. But is a body slam enough to kill? Uh, the body slam is resisted. Ferrothorn is quite tanky. This Ferrothorn just needs to get to one power whip. Let's the first one go and just has to get to this power whip. Just one more bullet seed. Oh my god, overtapped, I think. Overtapped. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Overtapped there, big time. Oof. Oh we my goodness. That body slam coming from Ali Lucky to be able to uh, finish off the Vigoroth on the other side. Goes for it, of course. No shields to block. Uh, this could be game over for that poor Vigoroth. And that overtap was an overreaction because she had that Vigoroth in the back, able to get to that body slam, saving the shield for that Vigoroth in the back. It didn't even matter that she overtapped one bullet seed because she was able to get to that next body slam and take that two to zero. Fantastic plays by uh, Ali there. And I believe, does that make it three to three 
I think oh my goodness, it's yeah. three to three right now in this uh, semi-final format. So whoever wins this next matchup is going to the finals of Sylph All-Stars. Will it be uh, Caleb Peng's team of the Primes or House Stark team captain uh, of the Seven Wonders? Wow, this is hype. I'm not. I don't know which team I would I would prefer to have uh, have against these two because this is um, both of them are such strong lineups and the captains are just so like well known, powerful. I mean, everyone would be like getting getting a bit hot under the collar if they uh, had to face either of them. So, yeah, I don't know who to root for personally. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in this final matchup, there's Dr. Tr Trotter versus Du Veins here. Uh, they are going to be playing the Floating City uh, format, so let's just go on to those teams. All right, and like I said, this is the finals on the line. We get a little bit of a preview there, and it is the same Obviously, from the primes, you got that Articuno, Drifflin core, but we got the Quagsire, and look at Doctor Trotter's team, Jolt, Jolt Switch. What, what, what are we looking at here? <laughs> a really crazy matchup itself. I mean, I, I'm excited to see the Alolan Sand Slash, but it gets eaten alive by everything but Articuno here. So, um, I don't think we'll be seeing much of it. Uh, the real sort of uh, threats from uh, from Doctor Trotter will be. Charizard, assuming of course it has fire spin. Uh, it really depends what uh, what we seem to see, but um, I mean, we'll probably see a lot of Drifblim as well as Articuno from uh, Duvain. Uh, it's uh, definitely a, a huge, huge piece with Articuno doing as much as it can, um, taking actually four of the six on the opposition. I wouldn't rule out a load in Sand Slash just yet, though, because I'm I, like I know obviously or on paper it will lose quite a few of its matchups, but it is one of the few things that will happily and I more than happily deal with Articuno, uh, being able to wall everything Articuno throws at it. We'll also be able to deal with Drifting very well because it can get to Ice Punch in four or five Powder Snows if memory serves. Um, and while Quagsire will beat it um, because it needs to rely on the Earthquake in order to uh, beat Alolan Sand Slash uh, like consist uh, consistently um, in a sh in a certain scenario where Alolan Sand Slash has a bit of loaded energy and can outrun a Quagsire or the Quagsire has been softened up by Ferrothorn or Pelipper or anything else. You never know. Maybe Alolan Sand Slash can surprise and flip a few matchups as well. So it's a very spicy and interesting pick. And I on paper it probably may not do as well, but better, strange things have happened and. Uh, Dr. Trotter wouldn't have brought it if it didn't have a fantastic role to play here. So I wonder how he plays Alolan Sand Slash. We love some spice. <laughs> that Drifflin does have a threat score of 502 against the Sand Slash. So Oof, uh, one tight. might be able to. Yeah, it's a, it's a really close matchup. It is a win if it's a uh, one to one shield for the Drifflin. Um, it also depends on baits and things too. You got to keep mm. that in mind. But um, we'll just have to see what happens if the spice gets brought and um if it can melt down that sand slash or not yeah, for I, sure for sure i love it the sand slash like uh such a good answer to the the triple flyers um i mean stun stun fisk is the other answer um and also ferrothorn but uh the stun fisk taking super effective damage from both of those um icy wind users so those those triple flyers are just looking real uh real scary and the thing is dr charter just has to position that sand slash perfectly because if it ever gets met up with the vigoroth or the obstagoon it's taking double super effect damage on the counter and it's just a liability to get farmed down and then uh a duvains will just have carryover momentum to start doing damage versus the rest of dr trotter's team so uh here we go uh the semi-finals finals here uh the primes versus the seven wonders tied three to three the deciding battles coming up right now i've seen that articuno right away and the vig we knew that was going to come we saw a little bit of a preview uh, we'll have to see how they top this out articuno flipping out right away for the pelipper uh, and vig switching out for that stun fisk so you know it's gonna be taking double super effective damage from the thundershock itself um getting to a weather ball from that pelipper is Definitely a piece that's going to hurt. Doesn't get it down to 50%, but gets it pretty darn close. 
discharge coming out, you know that uh, we're going to have to shield that because, like I said, double super effective, just like on that Mantine. So just keep an eye out. There, it's blocked right away. Butters? Yeah, it, it, Duvain's is in a tough spot. Safe swapping uh, the Pelipper is matching the shields here, but at this point, Dr. Trotter could just outpace it to every single Thundershock, uh, I believe, and just maintain the switch advantage and keep some health on the Stunfisk here. So uh, let's see if Duvain's is just going to let this Pelipper go. No, double shielding. Maybe he's buying time. Maybe he's double shielding, buying time to switch to switch out again because he's right at his timer. So he's going to throw this Weather Ball. So maybe he's going to throw this Weather Ball and then try to sack swap onto a Thundershock, uh, maintaining some health on the Pelipper here. That would be a very, very nice play if he can pull it off. He has to time it perfectly. And what does he swap? No, he doesn't manage to do it, sadly. Oh, that's a shame. That's a shame. Yeah. So, yeah. And I realize there's nothing to swap to. Duvain's is running triple flyers. He can't swap on oh. anything because everything is super effective. And he's going to go for the ice shard farm down. Is he going to get it? One more ice shard. He barely get, but barely gets to the discharge for Dr. Trotter. This is huge. This stun fisk is just putting in so much work. It's going to uh, really hurt this Articuno here, but the Articuno is going to get this nice farm down and able to uh, single move, though, only going to be able to Icy Wind. That's definitely interesting to see. I mean, it is super expensive, but um, only having that Icy Wind uh, can cripple you a little bit if you're, if you're not ready for whatever else it might be. Yeah, One crucial thing here is, though, the Drift Blim is such a positive matchup versus that, uh, versus that uh, Vigoroth in the back. So if Driftlim is able to Shadow Ball farm down. Uh, the Driftlim has a slight shot here. Yeah, that is actually a real possibility. I've re I have re I remember nightmares in particular old sil uh, Sylph cups where um, Driftlim Vigoroth matchup was something you did not want to see. So yeah, Shadow Ball coming in. I don't think this KOs does it. Oof, he needs really to get the farm though. down. He needs to get it. One hex, two hex. He doesn't get it. The Pelipper gets to this Weather Ball, and this is going to take it for Dr. Trotter, because Dr. Trotter uh, is looking nice uh, in the back here, has the Vigoroth at about three-fourths health versus this uh, lower health Articuno. The Articuno might be able to get to an Icy Wind, but no, Dr. Trotter just has that Body Slam already ready, and this Body Slam is probably going to take out the Articuno. So Dr. Trotter putting the Seven Wonders uh, up one game to zero here. Really good plays there, all, all all around. Yeah, it was that was always going to that was always going to be a tricky one. I think the the immediate swap into Pelipper may have cost with um with Stunfist being the safe swap. I think Duvain was hoping not to see Stunfist there, and that's and it's just sod's law is what they, uh, is what they say um in the UK where thing you don't want to happen happens. <laughs> yeah, Murphy's law definitely a, a big oh yeah Murphy's law as well yeah. <laughs> No, they just call it that in the UK. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But um, yeah, yeah the, we're just weird. Joel <laughs> Switch, what do you what do you think about that uh, triple flyer team by Duvain? Do you think he sticks with it, or is that uh, is that Stunfisk? I mean, if if you land any other Pokemon, any other flyers on that Stunfisk, I think like uh, Adelion was saying, if it's any other of the two flyers, if it's a Driftlim or the Articuno, you're just fine against that Stunfisk. But the one Pokemon you don't want to match it up with is that Pelipper, and he got the Pelipper stuck on the Stunfisk, and that Stunfisk had carryover momentum to really take uh, so much of an advantage for Dr. Trotter. Just energy from Thundershock is something to behold. It's very much like Counter and Body Slam on uh, on the Vigoroth that we've seen so many times already today. Um, but, I mean, it's, it's hard to say what he's going to do moving forward. Um, if he makes an adjustment, you know, his opponent's going to be thinking, well, he's going to make an adjustment. But if he sticks with what he's got and his opponent is expecting an adjustment, then all of a sudden it could shift the tides there too. Yeah, and at this point, we're going to see if Dr. Trotter just keeps that, uh, tries to keep that stun fist healthy, two shields in the back. This is an elimination game for the Primes. So let's get into it. If, if they lose, they're, they're eliminated and Seven Wonders go to the finals. Pelipper yeah. on both ends here. This could be a really interesting matchup. Well, it really boils down to IVs. It looks like they are synced up appropriately by the looks of it. Getting to a Is weather ball or Dr. Trotter right away. Not going to see a shield by the looks of it from Duvain. Going to take that damage. Not very effective, of course. Uh, we'll have to I see if he goes for Hurricane. Ooh, I think a I I think Duvain's managed to slip a extra um, fast move in there as well, which is an advantage for him. Hurricane's coming in, the shield is coming out, so really well, well played to call that shield there. Nice, and an immediate switch out. 
into Vig. Okay. Yeah, interesting swap out there. I was looking at the back lines, and it's and it's just looking uh, good for Duvain's because both players had Vigoroth in the back, but Duvain's had the Quagsire to meet that Stun Fisk. So interesting on that swap out here because uh, the Pelipper did have an energy advantage. It's just going to outpace it to these uh, Weather Balls, and Vigoroth can never farm down a Pelipper because of those resisted body, body slams. So uh, maybe Duvain's just looking to close with Quagsire here, looking to get this Pelipper Pelipper out of here, and finally the Pelipper, Pelipper goes down. Yeah, I think it, I think uh, Duvain's adjusting based on that triple flyer, thinking now I need to bring Quagsire because that stun fist was too much of a pain in the last match. So um, good adjustment there, and we'll see if it pays off or not in the end game of this battle. We'll definitely have to take a peek at that one because I mean that definitely shifts it. It's got a really high threat score against it here. Uh, seeing that uh, that Pelipper back out against Vigoroth once again. Opposite sides, of course. Body Slam coming out with a shield on the Pelipper for Duvain. And, and Duvain's had to shield that because uh, Quagsire can't farm down anything uh, because Mudshot does so little damage, as we've seen in so many matches today. He had to shield that because uh, he can't farm down the Vigoroth, and the Vigoroth would just put so much pressure. So he had to use that shield. Now he's taking Mud Bombs, but he is switch locked into this uh stun fist here just go straight for these earthquakes he might over farm a little bit take one more mud bomb uh but at this point uh he's gonna have to be really nimble because that vigoroth does have a shield in the back uh and could maybe farm down this quagsire so he does go for the earthquake and this is gonna be a really game deciding sh oh he no shields immediately no shields so he's confident that it may not be an earthquake and this may be the surprise then let's see. Does he get to the stone? The difference, the difference between Quagsire, the difference between Quagsire and Swamper is Quagsire is just much slower, higher energy moves, so it's easier to farm down. So he does shield this first one. What is the timer like? Can he ever get out? Uh, this Vigoros is just looking to farm down and then body slam the Pelipper. And I think he's going to get the farm down. Is he going to get the farm down? Yes, he, he gets the farm down. And, it for you. and he, he has the body slam baked up and it's one wing attack away. And the body slam is going to go through. Uh, Dr. Trotter is going to take it just with the skin of his teeth just with the skin of his teeth beautiful wow the last hit right there holy cow the the other thing as well if he if uh, for by some strange reason if that pelifer had survived it did manage to slip a wing attack um while that charge move was being sent by the vigorot and that would have given it enough to drop the weather ball because i believe the pelifer would win cmp so um it was a really big 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 thing that the Vigoroth was able to KO there because it was pretty pretty close in term it was pretty close in terms of being able to do so so yeah well played well played yeah fantastic plays by Dr. Trotter that means the seven wonders are moving on to the Sylph All-Star Finals uh congratulations to them and their team captain House Stark fantastic battles uh against the primes a team captain Team Captain Caleb Pang, they were right in it. Maybe if uh, Duvain's throws that Earthquake before that second Mud Bomb comes in by the Stun Fisk, and if that Stun Fisk wants a No Shield, then that Quagsire is much healthier and cannot be farmed down. So uh, just by an inch, doesn't tie it up and loses, but great run by uh, the Primes there to make it to the semifinals. They have it tied 3-3. Three to three. Fantastic play by them. Um, but the Seven Wonders moving on to the finals. Now we do get to take a quick peek at the next set of teams to see who the Seven Wonders will be facing off against. Uh, we will, of course, see some interviews with their team captains as well, which will be really interesting to, uh, to listen to and, and take a peek at the, the teams and what they've got picked. Yeah, this is the Squirtle Squad versus Team Chia Chia. And the Squirtle Squad's got uh, Racha Babyface, uh, UC uh, for the battles, Speediest Chief as the team uh, captain, Meron, Steve, which I believe PvP Steve just hit rank one in the GBL leaderboards, almost at like 3,500 rating. I, I, don't, I don't know. I might be wrong on that, but uh, just fantastic. And then Burnabus versus Team Chia Chia, which I got to see play. Um, I believe yesterday, uh, the uh, Swagron, Azare, Team Captain Angelino, uh, Linden, Eliza, uh, Kakuta Matata, PvP Poke himself, and Jimma Banks, uh, just some stacked 
uh, rosters. You'd have to think Jimba Banks had a uh, had a pitch for that team Chia Chia uh, title there. But uh, man, I'm I'm so looking forward. Whoever wins this goes to the finals to, like you said, uh, meets the seven wonders there. And we have the world champ coming up here uh speediest chief with an interview uh, i'm a huge fan of his so stick around for this interview and then we'll get into the games shortly after that all right everybody speedy chief 2 here captain of the squirtle squad we have moved on to the semi-finals but i gotta tell you that first round was a thriller uh, so many just nail biter matches and it was a real team effort uh, to advance us to the next stage so running through the pairings we did have rocha take on bart the gamer he did get the one two so he wasn't able to pull off the set we got our first loss pretty early on but we weren't discouraged at all uh, i took on mr wanderson i can't believe how close that match Match was with the hurricane failing to KO the Vigoroth. He gets off the body slam, locks down that game one, and then game two just dominates. Really, really well played by my opponent there. Uh, we also have Yusei taking on Oh, okay, haha. Uh, some people know her as Casey. She was too powerful for the double charm. Yusei was unable to pull out that win, but the bad news is over. The good news is starting to flow here. So we did have Burnabas taking on Nopfan. He actually won a nail biter of a match, a very, very close set, 2-1 uh, to give us our first win. Moving on then to Mehran versus Escombrara. Man, this these are two trainers that were continental champions, insane battlers, uh, just high, high quality players and uh, Mehran walked away with the 2-0 victory. So very, very proud of my teammate there. Former uh, competitor, now teammate, uh, a great ally to have on my team. So happy about that. Then we have For the Battles taking on Tho Technical, two of the biggest names in PvP. Really, really elite battlers, experienced battlers. I can't say it enough. Uh, Kim was able to walk away with a 2-1 victory, and in her recap, she said that charge moves were caught. Under charges needed to happen, and they did for the extra farm. CMP ties decided the wins. Uh, in one game, she even led her Tropius into Tho's Skarmory. If very, very few battlers can give up a lead to Tho Technical and still win the game. So I'm very, very proud of Kim for pulling off that win. The deciding set, though, was an Aussie throwdown. We did have uh, Steve take on Fish on a Heater, and he ended up winning it, but it was a very, very close set as well. Uh, Steve actually mentioned to us that he went back and watched Fish on a Heater's Sunrise Cup tournament and discovered that Fish on a Heater has a tendency to change his lead every game. So in game one, Steve got wrecked by the Drift Blim, but he knew Fish on a Heater would change his lead, so he didn't prepare for that same lead, didn't fall into that trap, and eventually the strategy uh, led him to come back and win that set against Fish on a Heater and advances to the semis. Uh, looking out to the semis, I'm just so excited. We have some really talented opponents, and I hope you enjoyed the stream today. Uh, I'm taking on Linden Ryu. Uh, I swear, it, it, no matter what tournament we're in, we always get paired. Uh, my first still tournament, I fought him in the Kingdom Cup in Tampa. We went all the way to Chicago, and we played each other in the Open Rainbow Cup. It's just bound to happen, and we got paired again. Uh, he is my 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 Gary to my Ash, my, my real uh, uh, rival here, if you will. So uh, that's just my match, but I, I know a lot of these trainers have really insane pairings as well. So that's enough for me. Uh, I'll stop talking. Let's get into the stream. God, I love him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just like perpetually happy, and that's the and that's the best way to be. I also re really appreciate all the like the trophies behind behind him for being world champion in the uh, in the last season. Fantastic, fantastic player, fantastic guy, and a great and just a great personality to have on the PvP scene. So uh, big, uh, big props to Speediest Chief. Yeah, definitely a, a great face of PvP, like you're saying, a, a very well-deserving world champ. And let's see if he can also be a Sylph All-Star champion, uh, see if his team can pull through to get to the finals. And we have the first matchup here, uh, Burnabus versus Jimma Banks. And let's see what format we will be in. Oh, looks to be Floating City. Yep. Uh, if anyone is just joining us now, the Floating City uh, meta is, I believe, ground, flying, steel, normal types. There are a bunch of bands. You cannot use uh, shadows. 
Uh, you cannot use legendaries or mythicals. Uh, you can't use Skarmory, Bastiodon, G Fisk, and uh, Jolt Switch. Am I missing any? Uh, it's the mythicals, not the uh, not the legendaries, which is why they. Have oh, okay, the gotcha. Yeah. Oh, sorry, and, and uh, also you can have uh, the uh, Articuno, obviously. Yeah. Yes, of course, of course, because Articuno just seems to run the table here, and and we can see that in the matchups that we're seeing as well. Um, Articuno here for. Uh, for Bernabas, and again, just running the table. There's nothing that can seem to stop it. Um, what we are seeing for Jimma, however, is that uh, if he can bring that Drift Limb and line it up appropriately, same with his Vigoroth, he might be able to uh, to figure some things out. It all depends on what happens, what energy gets used, what shields, and I mean, that's just how the battles are. Yeah, we saw uh, we see a Wigglytuff here for uh, the Squirtle Squad on Burnabas' team, and we saw Ali in the last uh, rounds making good use of that Wigglytuff safe swap. But this time, uh, no Ferrothorn in the back for those extra shields for the Burnabas, and uh, just a just a fantastic format. I think a really well done job by Sylph here to have. Uh, a really even meta, in my opinion, and a lot of neutral matchups. So a lot of uh, fluid gameplay uh, really gives you a chance to differentiate yourself as a battler. So we're going to see a lot of fantastic plays, a lot of good safe swaps, a lot of good sack swaps, a lot of uh, great energy management. And I'm just, uh, I, I can't wait to see this, uh, Adelion. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Oh, and we're jumping straight into the first battle here, and it's Figaroth into Ferrothorn, and it's good for the Vig, not so good for the Ferrothorn. <laughs> <laughs> and well, this Figaroth does not have the Brick Break, though, uh, so it has to get all the way up to that Bulldoze. We'll have to yeah. see what, uh, what seems to come from it, because, I mean, those counters are going to be able to do a little bit of work on the Steel Typing of the, fer uh, the Ferrothorn. Uh, but uh, we can see that's going unshielded and the switch out right away, Vig to Vig, Body Slam one to the other. Um, the interesting thing about normal types is that I don't believe it's not very effective against itself, very similar to fighting types. Yeah, and I think I think Jimbo was trying to swap on a Bulldoze there, uh, trying to catch that Bulldoze. As the Bulldoze is not a very good move, obviously no stab. So trying to like make get a little bit of advantage swapping on that Bulldoze, but uh, Burnabas did throw the Body Slam, so that Body Slam chunks the Vigoroth, and it looks like Jimbo's going to back the back here. A Charm does go through, though. So if Burnabas decides the shield, that Charm will go through. Okay, great, Burnabas does go for the shield there. Seems like and we can play. also keep in mind that Jimmy Banks seems to have that brick break uh, as opposed to the bulldoze, so it's a, a different sort of matchup one to the other there, which is uh, interesting to see. Now, the Ferrothorn may come back in here, and we saw from previous matchups how that Ice Beam still does a respectable amount of damage on Ferrothorn. Ice Beam does come off first, so a shield will have to be consumed to protect this Ferrothorn uh, and then allow for a further bit of farming, I guess, but not too much because Charm still chunks even on the steel type, sadly. Yeah, great point. It's such a hard farm down. Like you're gonna have to you're gonna have to power whip here because those charms are just adding up. Bullet seed doesn't do too much damage, and Ferrothorn doesn't have that high of attack stat. So having to throw this power whip, but banking one move for the next Pokemon. Yeah, which is good. And what comes you'd expect maybe the Figaroth to come in, or is your is uh, Burnabas gonna predict that a power whip's gonna be thrown? Power whip is thrown immediately. Will a shield come out though? That's the question. No, he's letting it go. Oh, okay. So he wants to keep his final shield for the Articuno and farm down this Ferrothorn. And that Ferrothorn needs to get out of there. It was letting that Articuno do way too many ice shards. And if this Articuno gets the icy wind first, oh no! See, this Articuno gets to the icy wind first because Jimma allows uh, too many ice shards on the Ferrothorn here. So now this is Articuno's match because it's already ramping up its debuffs. It can it can shield the first discharge and get to the next icy wind before the back to back discharges. Yes, absolutely, and yet, in fact, it doesn't even it doesn't even give Stunfist the opportunity to get um to get its first discharge off even after charging up to two. So this is perfect. Now this next discharge, even if even if um, Articuno doesn't shield, not a problem. It will only it will only take about forty percent of its health off. If that, probably less. There we are. Yeah, and the next one here, maybe will the shield come or not? I think he will shield this one. Oh, he oh, no shields this one too. Oh, he wow. he did sneak in an ice shard in between the back to backs. He's gonna get an ice shard farm down here. And this Ferrothorn has about one health. One ice shard should do it. And yeah. takes out the Ferrothorn. Uh Bernabas takes that one to zero. Showing off not uh, showing off not even needing the shield there, though. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> 
There's debuffs uh, racking up on the stun fist with that ICU in. So yeah, no, well played, Bernabas there. Really good play. And yes, you were saying just quite quite literally you said too too many um uh, ice shards on that stun fist really flipped that match up. So yeah, very uh, very well played. Definitely an amazing matchup, especially to see Articuno making that uh, that run through everything here. Leading off with the next one, we have a Wigglytuff versus Vigoroth on the side of Jimma, and we'll have to see what uh, what happens here to uh, if someone's going to make a switch, make an adjustment. Keep in mind, Brick Break is on that Vigoroth, so it could be a, an interesting move if it uh, if it lands. Going for the Body Slam. Uh, this is an advantageous spot for Jimma. Uh, Vigoroth does win the no shield, but there comes the shield for Burnabas. Burnabas wanting the swap advantage and then getting in another charm through on the back to back. Uh, so here comes the second body slam, but uh, was able to get a charm through. So now will this Wigglytuff be able to farm down this Vigoroth before it gets to the body slam because of that charm? It's possible, but no, throws a move just to be safe uh, because that is the typical matchup. Maybe he didn't have to because of that extra charm. Yeah, it's, poss it's possibly too close to call, and he didn't want anyone to play it safe there and ensure that he at least takes this Vigoroth out. So Stunfist comes in, and there'll be a fair amount of chip damage there from the charm. So Stunfist choosing to stay in and farm up some more, um, and then wipe out the, Vig uh, the Wigglytuff with fast moves alone. Now, the question is, what comes in? Because that Articuno is not going to like a loaded Stunfist with a shield disadvantage. So Vig, I'm assuming? Yeah, Vig comes in. So let's see. It's and the, I have a, yeah. I have a quick question for you two. Is is Stunfisk a mud boy? Because we got two mud boys <laughs> in the back for Jimma here. Oh god, this uh, this this thing again. I swear this get this comes this conversation comes up all the time as a, for a for a bit of entertainment. Is Stunfisk a mud boy? Lives in the mud, so technically make mud guys. Like this is not a, a difficult question. Like come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling it a mud boy though. I think Jimba has two mud boys in the back, one mud boy for each Chia on his team, and he's gonna get icy winded right here, right before he gets that hydro cannon. Now he has two shields, uh, but at this point, this Articuno is sitting very healthy, um, and these mud shots are not doing very much to it at all. So even if he gets to this hydro cannon, it, the the big thing is, is Jimba gonna get to two hydro cannons before he gets farmed down? Yeah, definitely that's going to be the big decisive thing um so let's see oh it's looking no it's not looking likely Ooh. he gets there that's huge no shields left for Burnabas. gets to the next hydro cannon but this uh articuno does get the full form down it has a lot of energy uh but the one shield left for the stunt fist it loses cmp has to shield this and i believe it did throw the cmp move uh with the thundershock or sorry uh uh discharge it's got the discharge uh, mud shock. it doesn't have thunder shock we got to keep that in mind too um oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Is deliberately underpowering as well in order to um oh no and then change his mind and decided to ko okay i thought it was trying to underpower and then farm down a bit more but uh hey ho um so discharge coming in now to like to chip, do some more chip damage on Vigoroth, but I wonder at this range with the counters racking up whether a few more counters and that body slam is going to KO this Stunfisk. So let's yeah, see. and he's going for the bulldoze too. Burnham oh, is yeah, just definitely. being just being safe, going for that bulldoze first. That's going to KO the Stunfisk. And you're right, that he was rocking the mud shot as a classic mud boy does. Yes, good point. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, mud shots. Gosh. <laughs> See that's interesting uh, with the mud sh with the mud shot as well because you'd think with a very flyer dominated um, matchup um, you you'd expect thunder shocks more, but maybe that stun feels there to deal with anything that's weak to ground instead. So yeah, fair enough. Congratulations, Bernabas, on the win. Yes, definitely. Bernabas takes that two to zero. Uh, kind of close there at the end for Jimma. Uh, well played by him. Uh, but there we go. Uh, the Squirtle Squad up. 1-0 to, to start out, and let's just move on to the next competitors here. Now we are seeing uh, Marin versus Elsa Noble. Oh, sorry. We're... And yeah, so we got Steve versus PvP Poke himself. And uh, what format will this be? Will it be the Floating City, or will we be seeing uh, a GBL-type specialist here? Um, in these Sylph All Star semifinals, I'm not happy with the. Oh, sorry. Go on, uh, go on, Jolt. You go first. 
we are seeing that floating city for this field specialist here. So it's, uh, we'll be able to see a little bit more of, um, I mean, if anyone's got that, uh, that Articuno once again. Oh, wow. So, Articuno's at all. Yeah, that was, no, that, that's what that's what threw me is after all of that. I liked, um, I was like, I was uh, about to say that there's not enough ease in Steve's ne uh, username there, but uh, <laughs> now we've got, now we've made sure we've got it we've got it right. And uh, going up against Mr. PB Poke himself. So uh, if anyone knows the stats, it's going to be this beautiful man, and uh, all he's contributed to the PVP scene. So uh, big shout out to PB Poke for that. Um, and also Steve, um, I'll shout out as well, being a Go Stadium tournament manager. Uh, so yeah, fantastic, two really fantastic players. Now, what stands out for the teams on either side? You can see the Wiggly again from um, from PB Poke, um, which um, has proven itself as a really effective safe uh, safe switch. But then Steve's also rocking one as well. So. I wonder if we'll they'll both have the same idea to run uh, to run them both as safe switches, and we'll see some charm mirrors potentially. Who knows? Yeah. And before uh, before Jolt Switch gets to the uh, threat scores, one thing to point out is there is no drift blim on Steve's team, and that's the one thing that really uh, threatens the Vigoroth safe swap. Because if you have a drift limb, you're really scared the safe swap Vigoroth because uh, the drift limb completely walls it. But no drift limb on on Steve's team, so that Vigoroth safe swap is just looking really good for PvP poke. It does look like an interesting matchup there, but I mean, Vig only loses or sorry wins against two of the things uh, against Steve um, that Ferrothorn as well as the Stunfisk. It, it runs, of course, an even 500 against itself, depending, of course, on movesets, because we need to keep in mind, it does have Brick Break. We've seen it a few times today. Who knows what these guys have chosen? But if they're the same, they're mirrors, um, it really depends on who's got the energy faster and, and who's launching what sooner. And I presume with the threat score, if uh, if Vigoroth does have Brick Break, then it won't be quite as effective. Well, it'll be effective. It won't be quite as effective against the Unovan Stunfisk um and vice versa if it's running bulldoze then it will struggle a bit more against vigoroths that uh, opposing vigoroth that have uh, brick break instead so yeah move sets really do matter in this meta and if you add to counter advantage what does it do to that threat store threat score i don't know but i know pvp poke knows and let's see how this <laughs> will play out uh let's get into match number one Oh, the mirror match, nice and early. All right. All right, Vig versus Vig. We'll have to see. Uh, we've got Brick Break on on PV Poke, so that's uh, that's uh, that could play in his advantage, of course. No. You know what's crazy? I think Body Slam is still a more energy efficient move. Uh, so Brick Break is not actually the move to throw. I think Body Slam uh, does more damage, and we do see the Body Slam coming out um from the vigoroth here because he knows it does do more damage and we have the shiny on the left for steve here and then here comes the swap into the drift limb to wall whatever move that has and get the energy advantage drift limb with energy advantage is so good and he gets the shadow ball off before the bubble lands uh, the bubble beam lands from man time which is big no shield as well which is even more even more significant uh, from pv poke's side uh, so that's a nice bit of nuking damage there. Now, will Bantan go for the Ice Beam straight away? He does. Will a shield come out, folks? What do you reckon? I think you no shield it. And there is the no shield here by PvP Poke. He knows the matchups. He knows he could take it. He's about to get to another Shadow Ball or an Icy Wind. He does throw the Ice Wind. It seems like Mantine uh, could just about be in range. It's a neutral move. Mantine has the stats of Skarmory, so quite tanky. But Mantine does let this go, and it survives. And will the Hexes be enough, or will he get to the Bubble Beam? He gets to the Bubble Beam last second. Ooh. So Steve is going to be able to take Switch Advantage here. Yeah, that's big. That's big. That I wonder if that was intentional, whether um, they were being overly ambitious with Icy Wind doing uh, not enough to, uh, with Icy Wind do, doing more damage than, um, sorry, less damage than what PV Poke predicted. But um, we'll see if that was the idea. Gets an ex extra unit of counter damage though, and count an energy. Therefore, maybe that will help with the Vig Mirror matchup. Who knows? Let's see. Oh, oh just about. So close. He, he, he almost gets there. Shinies usually always win CMP. And oh my god, was this actually CMP or will a counter get 
through. No, but a swap does, and he swaps onto the Charizard to take that body slam. Really good swap there. They're now even in shields, but this Char oh no, and the Charizard uses shields. So now the Charizard has zero shields, and guess what's in the back? The tanky bird itself, the Mandibuzz. So let's now race to see if you can take out the um, shield with a uh, with a dragon claw instead of a blastman. Blastman coming in is the shield coming out first, or is it being saved? It is being saved, and the blastman makes its mark huge damage. Um, Charizard's blastman really does just overwhelming power, even against the bulk that Mandibuzz can offer. Falfly coming in now. So how much will that chip away from Charizard's health? Let's have a nosy. Once the lag kicks in, oh, sorry, kicks yeah. away. And it looks like this foul play is gonna it's gonna KO the Charizard here, it seems yeah, definitely. like definitely. Yeah, definitely. You're right, you bang on the money here. Oof. And then now it's another oh race. Oh my goodness, it's a race. And he's oh. farming a little extra. I he's don't... overdone it. He's overdone why, it, I reckon. Why farm so much extra? I I, I believe uh PV Pokes Vigoroth is just one health in the back. Maybe yeah, I thought is. it was too. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Huh. Oh. But he did have a shield. Oh, oh, ah, fair. That, oh, that would makes, make sense. Yeah. Makes total sense. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. He had to get the both body slams. Uh, Jolt switch with the save there. Uh, from the error on my side, he did have a shield. He had to get to two body slams there, and he was not quite at it. That's why he was trying the back to back before the foul play. Man, the buzz gets the foul play off, and B is able to take that uh matchup for PvP poke. A PvP poke decides to save two shields in the back for Manda's Manda Buzz. Really good play there. Let's see how Steve adjusts. Maybe he does he bring the Wigglytuff now? It could be, be a really interesting matchup for him, but I mean, it, it's, it only does 50% of that team. It really holds up well against Drifloom, of course, uh, as well as Manda Buzz, but uh, uh, Vigoroth is kind of a an interesting pick simply because of that brick break, uh, which is something that, of course, we need to keep in mind. That's it. It's not bulldoze on that one. Was brick break? A brick break wasn't revealed as well on um, on uh, PV Poke's side. So at this point, Steve isn't aware of the threat uh, to Wigglytuff from brick break. So yeah, we'll see what happens. All right. So uh, Kakuna Matata up one to zero. Let's get into game number two. Can he tie this up for Team Chia Chia? And we get the shiny Vigoroth into the shiny Swampert. We got a shiny battle here. Love it. We'd love to see that. Uh, so they're going to race to it. And who is going to get their charge move off first? That is the question. Swampered by a, by a hair. <laughs> Oof. But goes for the body slam. Doesn't go for his charge attacks. He's probably going for a back-to-back. -back. Um, oh. Gets the shield from, the, uh, from Kakuna Matata there. And here we're going to start to see those hydro cannons launching. I feel like they do quite a bit more damage than that body slam does. Which... Yes, quite right. Quite right. Yeah. And then he can, and the other beauty of it is that you can race to another Hydro Cannon before that second Body Slam comes off because he slipped an extra Mud Shot in there anyway, and it's four to the second Hydro Cannon after the first one hits. So huge damage there, beautifully done. And will the next Body Slam come in? And yes, will this KO the Swamper? Uh, the Swamper in Great League is not as tanky as the Ultra League one we're used to, and he lets it go. He does survive it, but he has to get to the Hydro Cannon. He doesn't want to risk it, so he safe swaps his own Vigoroth to try to snipe this Vigoroth, but he doesn't get it. Uh, able to get to one more Body Slam for Steve here. And a shield, shield comes out. Oof. Uh, to see if he reveals that brick break at any point. Getting the body slam has quite a bit of energy for the next set of moves, whichever one he decides to move forward with. Um, no shields, of course, from from Steve, because uh, but he does have one left. He does have that shield advantage here this game. Yeah, they looked like he did CMP on that ice beam, or at least he was trying to press it. We don't know if it actually the CMP did get off. Mantine would like to farm a little bit more. But the good news is that uh, Vigoroth does not die to this ice beam, so he is going to get to farm a little bit more. But Vigoroth does sneak in a counter. Maybe Vigoroth can yep. now get to one more body slam because of that counter sneaking. Yes, I think you are uh, bang on the money with that one. Yep, and yep, exactly as, as predicted. Uh, will the shield come out? No, it doesn't. He's going to let Mantine go, so fair enough and then try and cleat farm down with what's in the back. Um, ooh, but a nice, uh, nice full health Wigglytuff looks pleasant at this point. We, we see something so big here, though. A complete adjustment by Kakuna Matata not bringing the Mandibuzz. And we see Steve bringing the Wigglytuff to face that Mandibuzz. But guess what's in the back? It's a Ferrothorn. Not what, not what Steve wants to see, sadly. 
and then straight out and oh, swap out immediately to deal with that. I think the Swampert went down before it could even do anything. Now we got a situation where Ferrothorn has some energy, uh, no shields, uh, but looks like it needs to get to three power whips here before this Wigglytuff charms and hits an ice beam. This is going to be quite close. Yeah, this, this is. I think I suspect this might be too much of an ask uh, for the Ferrothorn just because charm is so oppressive. Uh, yeah, but but he let's, just needs... Let's... He just needs one more bullet seed, or maybe two more bullet seeds. He's gonna survive this. He needs just he needs to just survive one more charm, and he's gonna be able to back to back here. But does he let a charm Oof. through? No charm goes through. That's, oh, that's huge. Big. That's big. That's that huge for big. that's huge for Kakuna Matata here. He just needs to get to one more power whip. He needs to survive this charm. It's gonna be so close. He gets there, and he gets there, and he's yes, like, just it. about, just about. That was tight. Really nerve wracking win there. Nerve wracking, but really good play. Timing that to perfection. Sorry, Joel, switch. Go for it. Turns. Relying on those animations and those turns to make sure that he could get there in time. That was really close at the end. Super close. If I believe he was one charm away from dying, and if somehow Steve snuck in one more charm, which is just hard to stop sometimes, uh, then he would be able to uh, win that matchup. But Kakuna Matata taking it 2-0 to zero and tying it up uh, for Team uh, Chia Chia uh, versus Squirtle Squad. Wow, really great games, and and let's just move on to the next the uh the next specialist here. All right, and we're gonna be getting uh just in one second, we're gonna be getting the next players coming up for Squirtle Squad and Team Chia Chia. Great start so far, really good games, and we got another good matchup coming for the battles versus Angelino. This looks good. This looks really, really good. Just the names alone. <laughs> yeah, two two fantastic battlers. Um, I believe Angelino might even be the team captain uh, for Team Chia Chia, but I'm not positive on that. And we do see this is open Great League here. Uh, so uh, this is going to be really interesting because these are actually very unique lineups for open Great League, and you, you love to see it. There's almost no commonalities in there aside from the um, the Azumarill and the Galarian Stunfist. I think the other four are all completely different, which is uh, yeah, as you say, lovely. Uh, it's lovely to see. Um, really uh, liking the look of the Shadow Obama Snow. Um, it is an oppressive Pokemon in Great League, very versatile, but it has a lot of things it will fear on for the battle side. Doesn't want to be lined up with the AWAC, and it work with Gal. The matchup with Galvantula is quite interesting. I think Joel Switch, you'll probably be a bit more knowledgeable on this than than i am but shadow of almost no versus galvantula um galvantula sure in a no shields lunge will absolutely annihilate it but um when because powder snow can be reached sorry weather ball can be reached in five powder snows you'll find obama snow can slip those in before the lunge lands in shielded scenarios so how does that work out how will that play out is uh, is something i'm curious about is galvantula still on that squad because when we were looking at them earlier it wasn't and that's where I, i'm running into a bit of an issue because I, I was planning for uh, what we were seeing originally i'm seeing an empoleon in its place i believe if I'm oh, okay not. let's have a let me have a nosy yeah. then <laughs> uh yeah and uh interesting because yeah like you said the shadow obama snow is looking so good uh against four of the battles uh, pretty much good against everything except for it just gets hard walled by the alone marowak so you would have to think for the battles is thinking about that alone marowak and what does angelina have to counter that it's got a lot of stuff it's got the g fisk umbreon azu and the sableye to counter the one weakness to the obama snow so uh for the battles is in a tricky situation how is she going to line up that awac into the obama snow or is she just going to sit it all together and not want to risk the positioning and try to take out the Obama Snow other ways by, like you said, if it is the Galvantula, Galvantula can't put in those super effective lunges, or um, the Pelipper actually with those super effective wing attacks, it, it, it does add up. And obviously, the G Fist has play against everything. So, G Fist can get to those rock slides, even with the rock slide nerf it just does so much damage. Um, but we're, I mean, we're gonna find out soon what that what that six Pokemon is. I just took I just took a look on the um 
on the article. I think Galv was still showing, oh, but yeah, let's it, have an over here. A good lead for um for Angelino. Yeah, and, and there was that AWAC lead just putting it at the start, and uh, Angelino calls that with the Umbreon, and it has it does have that Shadow Obama still with the 1500 CP. I'm jealous there. Also, the G Fisk in the back, and now it's just staying in with this Umbreon, looking to damage the G Fisk a little bit because honestly, he doesn't have a very good safe swap for this G Fisk. He might as well just stay with the Umbreon. He does sneak in that one Snarl, and he shields the first Earthquake. Really want to maintain avoiding his Shadow Obama snow uh, against that AWAC later. Definitely, it's a good, it's quite a common thing to often have the heavy hitting moves uh, land early on where people are discouraged to shield because they reckon they can tank anything that's thrown at them. So to shield early on the earthquake is uh, unconventional, but uh, definitely uh, a good idea at this point uh, with what's in the back line. So yeah, another foul play coming in to chip away more at this G-stun. Um, so, and they can go back to back as well. A mud slot, a mud shot does uh, slip in uh, in between the two uh, foul plays, but still a chip damage comes in. Nope, it shielded, never mind. Uh, so let's see who wins that race to the next earthquake or foul play. Foul play gets that CMP tie. Nice. We get another shield. And switch advantage is absolutely crucial here. So for the battles, just barely hitting to this earthquake. Is this enough? Umbreon's so thick. Angelino has to call if it's an earthquake or not, and he calls it. It is that earthquake. He shields. Now he can farm down, and he's going to be able to avoid that Alona Marowak. Uh, and what does for the battles have in the back? Oh, it's that Azu. So uh, Azu's coming in, able to get a lot of energy here, not really threatened. Really going to be able to sponge up this extra energy by the Umbreon, no problem. Yeah, definitely. And it's running play rough as well. So um, it, at any point, it can choose to KO the uh, Umbreon. So it really boils down to when for the battles wants to pull the trigger. Um, but there is an argument for just farming up as, mac uh, as much as possible here with Umbreon's attack, not being the finest of stats against the bulk of Azumarill. But you need to keep in mind that that uh, bubble also isn't doing as much damage as it used to, which means she's going to get energy a lot faster when she's trying to farm down. Yeah, fantastic yeah. point. Uh, not being able to get this farm down, that bubble nerf really hurt uh, there for the farm down and throwing that ice beam. And here we go, the Obama Snow in the back. Uh, and then here comes the swap, trying to catch a move maybe. It's the AWAC, which he's already seen into the G Fisk. Uh, now, the thing is, though, uh, for the battles does have a shield and uh properly calling an earthquake, or will Angelina just go, uh, Angelino just go straight for these rock slides here? Could be a really tight matchup here. If we can get back to back rock slides, you won't have to worry about the shield because that'll end, the, that should end the uh, Alolan Marowak with the fire typing itself. Uh, but uh, we just gotta wait and see. AWAC should survive this rock slide nerf. Uh, it won't kill the AWAC, right. and the AWAC will survive. How much can the AWAC farm down? Uh, look how much high. Uh, oh, but no! Was that a desync CMP? I think that was a desync CMP. So now getting zero farm down. Uh, and but okay, a little bit farm down, one fire spin. But here comes the Obama Snow. Is he in Weather Ball range or does he have to get all the way to the energy ball? Any swap on the weather ball. Wow. Fantastic swap on the weather ball. A really, really insane play there. Insanely well, great timing. That's what we love to see. That's what we love to see at this kind of level. And um, here comes the play rough, which is going to do a huge amount of damage, if not KO this Obama Snow. Uh, so yeah, no, that's really, really good. Really it's good. It's not over. All the Obama Snow needs to do is maybe get the two weather balls. Can it survive one more bubble? It can't. Ooh. It can't survive one more bubble. Uh, bubble nerfed in it. Matter there. Uh, for the battles, takes it 1-0. Wow, that was close. That was nerve-wrackingly close. Oh, man. That was a tight matchup. Holy cow. That weather ball definitely would have done some work on the uh, on the Azu, but uh, just couldn't hang in there with the taking more damage as a shadow. That's just a, a rough day altogether. Yeah, I wonder how, uh, how well the uh, conventional Obama Snow would have fared there. But um, yeah, we, it's always difficult to speculate about these kinds of things because that would change the battle dynamics quite significantly. But yeah, um, on to the second one then, I guess. Seeing an Umbreon lead against a, a Lolan Marowak here. I mean, Angel Angelino called it well. 
So uh, they're playing it out literally the same exact way. Angelino feeling very confident with what he did in the first round, just thinking he got maybe a little bit outplayed by some swaps there at the end. But in the long run, if he just keeps the same strategy, he thinks he can pull ahead and uh, for the battles, just doing the exact same thing, say swapping the G-Fist, Umbreon staying in. They're probably going to play out this matchup. But at this point, Angelino doesn't want to be in the same way as last time where he was down a shield also. Can this Umbreon ever win switch advantage, but also um, keep shield advantage equal? He uses that shield on the Earthquake the first go-round. Once again, it's just a mirror matchup here. Uh, there may be a difference in maybe one or two moves of energy, but they're they're playing it out the same, like you said there. Here comes another Earthquake from that Galarian Stunfisk. This one goes and on shield mid as well. A bit less than 50 health left on that Umbreon going for the foul play once again. Um, we'll have to see if uh, if a shield gets burned here on the other side. There it yeah, is. It does. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not the rice. Uh, and it's co it's coming down to the exact same situation before. Last time, uh, for the battles through this earthquake, and Angelino did shield it. I don't think he has to shield it. I think he survives this earthquake. Umbreon is so thick. I think he survives. Will he change this time? He does change this time. Let's see if he survives this. The earthquake goes. It lands. He survives. Ooh. Does he get the snarl down? He gets the snarl down. The adjustment here from Angelino. Going for foul play as quickly as possible. Can't get it up in time, though. But it's good in a way because now you can line up the snowman against uh, Azu and then line up G-Stun against AWAC. So this is really looking really good for Angelino at the moment. Yeah, definitely looking in. much better than match number one. He has the shield where he didn't in match number one. So he does properly shield the Shadow Bone, and now he needs to get the three rock slides because you imagine one of them is going to get shielded unless for the battles just wants to rock with Azu the rest of the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea, actually. That could potentially work. Going for the second one. We'll see if we get a shield. No, it looks like she's looking to rock with... Oh, no, oh. Last, last minute shield. And then now here comes a Shadow Bone. Um, but the Shadow, Shadow Bone has been be nerfed. Close, right? yeah. It's going to be close, right? It's going to be KOing. close. Yeah, it'll be close. It'll be, it's been nerfed, mm. though, but so... She's oh, just but too guess... thick. Oh, but the defense fell! But it didn't Ooh. matter. It didn't matter. The defense fell, almost getting the debuff there for the win, getting the, the Fire Spin farm down, but G-Fist, too tanky, gets to that Rock Slide, and now we just have uh equal uh no shields a uh, shadow bomb of snow uh versus this azu and poor little bunny bunny does not want to mess with this abominable snowman at this point nope just raining energy balls are gonna come in very very soon oh, man bubble snuck in bubble snuck in but at this point the shadow bomb of snow actually can kill with one energy ball in one weather ball i believe so all he has to do is get to this weather ball and he uh, does angelino's gonna tie it up here yeah very well played there it's just it just goes to show that just one slight adjustment like deciding not to shield the earthquake for example can flip things little 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 things is all all it takes sometimes absolutely absolutely and it, it played out exactly the same except for he no shielded that umbreon's too thick survives barely gets the snarl down and it's now one to one and they played it the same way the first two games if you play it the same way i think angelino comes up on top because he knows what he needs to do now so what will the adjustments be we're gonna find out here in match number three Oh, this is not... this could be a really close matchup here. Galvantula um, doesn't do so well against that stump, so of course you're going to see it come out. And now we've got that mirror match, but Angelino's got uh, energy advantage on this one. Mm -hmm. Just by a whisker. Oh, and he's fallen for the bait. Yes, that's huge. For the battles, knows she's in a disadvantage situation because she is behind on energy. So she does throw the bait, but so does Angelino. Angelino knows that now he's at the disadvantage, so he throws the bait. So now they're equal again, but no, Angelino's slightly ahead on energy by one mud shot. No, they get to the mud shot at the exact same time, and think... for the battles wins the CMP. Angelino has to shield this. Does he let it go? Oh my god, it looks like he's gonna... No, he shields it shielding last second. It. Oh dear, oh dear. Should the earthquake, we'll have to see if they got uh, if they're mirroring ships. Yes, they are. There yeah. it is. Yep. 
Wow, For the Battles was able to sneak in a mud shot to equal the energy here and getting two baits off, really risky. And now Angelino swaps, trying to catch the Earthquake. He does catch that Earthquake onto the Umbreon. And you think he's going to be met by the Galvantula here. Yeah, most definitely. He's launched the Earthquake. Oh no, he's farming up a bit more and said, okay, and here comes the Galvantula now because um, the foul plays are not going to KO the Galvantula. It'll probably take about 40% of its health, give or take. A uh, bit of lag there. Um, and then uh, the lunge is going to really cripple this um, Umbreon when it gets to it. So here it comes. And does it KO? Or it'll probably take it into the red, I reckon. But Man, Umbreon is so thick. I don't think it KOs, but yeah, it's going to do a ton of damage. And it doesn't quite KO. And here comes this foul play. But at, like you said, it's now debuffed. So this Galvantula will survive and be able to farm down. And what does Angelino have in the back uh, to wall this? He does have that stun fisk. And he, oh my god, Umbreon's so thick. He almost gets to that foul play. A uh, little bit of lag here. But I think this Fold Switch will KO. But he, he, he can take this lunge, no problem. Yeah, it's the only downside with taking this launch is the more it's more the debuff than the damage, which is now concerning. Uh, but um, we will see what gets brought in against this G stun. Um, so it brings in the Yazoo, which is sort of sensible. Swap out to get rid of the debuff, and here comes the Snowman now. Um, but trying to go, oh yeah, go for it. There's a lot of play here for Angelino because Angelino survives this and he if he's very precise with his farming of energy, he can get up more energy and throw the energy ball. And he he, he maybe throws one mud shot too early, but you got to be safe here. And he throws this energy ball and he will get to another energy ball against the Azumarill. And we know the Azumarill doesn't have Hydro Pump and we know Angelino does have the Earthquake just about ready. I think this is Angelino's match. But no, oh, no, what? The, the, the ice beam gets got to the ice first. beam first. The bomber snow was one powder snow um, away, so that's a big, big deal, and that's going to be very, very co costly. So we'll see. The, the G stun needs to get as many earthquakes off as possible uh, before being chipped away by the ice beam. But I don't think there's enough in the tank. Let's find out. Yeah, and the game is going to come down to this. G-Fist needs to get to that Earthquake, but Azu actually survives this Earthquake and gets to the Ice Beam just before it. Wow, for the battles, great play, able to take it two to one. And you would have to think Angelino threw that Energy Bill on the G-Fist one Powder Snow too early. If he farmed up one more Powder Snow, if he was completely precise, he would have got into that Energy Ball and taken that matchup. So close, a game of inches down there at the end. Yeah, most definitely. They're really, really tight margin. Just get, again, just goes to show at this kind of level, all it takes is just one, 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 not necessarily a slip up, one minor adjustment, one, uh, one fast move extra, one fast move less, and that could cost things or that could uh, win, flip the match up. Uh, it's just really, really tiny margins at the end of the day. Yeah, and and well played. I believe now um, the Squirtle Squad is up two to one and here we go our fourth matchup uh you see i don't want to uh, anyone want to take a guess i don't know how to pronounce this properly myself do you guys know how this one is pronounced i'm gonna go with you see for yeah i'll stick, I'll stick with that <laughs> like you see through get it okay maybe. you see you see through uh or maybe you maybe you also um Maybe chat can help us out with this one. Um, oh, Yusuf Rao versus, uh, oh, no, here we are. versus Azure here. At least I could do that one. Uh, Azure is, this is going to be, looks to be the open uh, ultra format, but it's not completely open uh, because you can only have one starter and one legendary or mythical. And it looks like uh, Yusuf Rao, uh is going for uh, the Giratina altered and the Empoleon, Azure deciding to choose the Venusaur and Cresselia. This could be a really, really close matchup here. That Shadow Lapras could do quite a bit of work. Uh, I believe, I'm just confirming, bear with me here. Um, I do like look. Actually, Shadow Lapras. Shadow Lapras doesn't do much at all. It, uh, it works. Um, I apologize. It does work against everything but the Machamp. We've got to keep that in mind. Uh, everything else is much less than the 500 rating, so uh, Clefable, Empoleon, Muck, as well as Giratina and Abomasnow fall to that uh, that lovely Shadow Lapras. So we might see a bit of play with it here today. 
Yeah, most definitely. I know as I've met Azra uh, in the past. He hails from uh, hails from Scotland, so just a bit further up north from uh, where I am. Really fantastic player, supremely analytical. Also, very great um, and entertaining Twitch streamer as well. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very curious to see how he plays because um, he's one tough cookie <laughs> to say, say the least. Um, but yeah, that's Shadow Lapras. I, I've played around with Shadow Lapras a fair bit in great league as well as um um seeing it a little, and from time to time in um in ultra league um so yeah i like what well, the thing i like about shadow lapras as well is people are intimidated by it in the sense that th normally with surfs you think oh it's just a surf it's fine but when it's a shadow lapras they really do chunk that extra 20 percent does encourage more shield usage where sometimes it's not perhaps the wisest idea to do so. So I'll be interested to see um, if that Shadow Lapras is used in that way to try and pick apart shields and uh, gain shield advantages or not. So yeah, should be cool. Yeah, and I, uh, the chat said it's you say fro. Uh, like, you say fro is, is how to say it. So uh, you say fro versus Azrae. And one quick note that I see is Azrae's Escavalier is just looking fantastic. Really good against Clefable, um, really good against Napoleon, great, completely walls of Bomb of Snow, great against Muck. And depending on the fast move of uh, the Giratina, if it's Dragon Breath, it also does quite good against, uh, quite neutral against that Dragon Breath Giratina as well. The only thing it's really worried about is the Machamp. And if maybe Azrae can bait out that Machamp, maybe safe swapping the Shadow Lapras and just closing with the Scavalier, maybe has a lot of play. Um, I'm looking forward to these battles. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I'm going. To, I'm going to admit my human tendencies, and I'll quickly pop to the loo for this first battle. But I'll be very back very, very quickly. <laughs> no worries. We'll we'll take over for this one. And um, yeah, before Cheers. we get in, uh, Jolt, Jolt Switch. Any 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 threat scores? Any any little thing uh, you wanted to mention? I mean, really, it's just that Lapras that stands out here to me. Um, if we're looking at Obama Snow from the opposite side for you say Fru. Um, it does work really well against, uh, of course, Venusaur with a, a 900 threat score. Um, so I definitely got to keep an eye out. The only things it seems to lose to is Escavalier and, and Lapras. Like I said, Lapras is, is going to be running wild, sort of like that uh, in the, what is it, the floating, the floating city. Uh, we see Articuno. That's where right. we're seeing Lapras here in this matchup. Right, ice ice types OP. All right, well let's let's get into it. Um, it's two to one, Squirtle Squad versus Chia Chia. And oh. here we are with Obama Snow and the Escavalier to lead off here. Uh, this is a, a bad matchup for Obama Snow. So you see the swap out to Clefable right away with the best buddy ribbon there right on the forehead. Uh, we've got a drill run coming up from that Escavalier. We'll have to see if that Clefable toughs it out or looks like she's gonna tough it out. Yeah, and that Escavalier uh, is just triple good versus uh, Yusefro's team here because the Obama Snow, Clefable, and Muck all lose to it. And safe swapping into this Cresselia to meet that Clefable uh, because uh, you just want to keep that Escavalier versus Obama Snow matchup because Escavalier completely walls the Obama Snow. And here comes a big moon blast, but it doesn't even look that big against that tanky Cresselia. These two are, are definitely sturdy, definitely something to, to watch out for. Now, we will see some not very effective damage coming from this Moon Blast, but uh, we do get a shield. Maybe we'll get a debuff. There's the oh, debuff man. with the attack calling. That's a beautiful, beautiful change. But we'll have to see what uh, what Charm is going to keep doing here today with, uh, with that. And that Azrae got in the time machine and used his Cresselia from pre-nerf and gets that instant uh debuff able to maybe survive the charms because of that and here comes the obama snow gonna get a nice farm down but no cresselia is too tanky gonna get to this moon blast again and if it really is a uh, pre-nerf cresselia then this is might get the debuff as well but either way this uh obama snow is gonna get a nice farm down but it's not gonna be able to do much into the escavalier because the escavalier just walls everything uh obama snow can do and we will have to see if we start seeing that lapras here that could be a, an interesting matchup Coming out, and he does Escavalier. decide to throw energy. He, he he does decide to throw the weather ball energy, uh, 
Obviously, the Scavalier uh, resists that Ice type. It double resists the Energy Ball. So uh, this Obama Snow is just going to have to throw a bunch of snowballs at this Scavalier to try to take it down. And one more will do it. And he's one Powder Snow away. Here it comes. And this this Weather Ball is actually going to KO the Scavalier. But at this point, uh, does he let it go? I'm shocked that he's letting it go. Azurei knows that Escavalier is triple good against the team. And then here comes the Lapras up a shield against Muck. And, and Shadow Lapras is just looking really good here. Oof. And you know they want those shields for that Shadow Mon because it's going to take that 20% more damage. With the Best Buddy Ribbon as well. Holy cow. Gosh, Azurei is dedicated, dedicated with the uh, Best Buddy um, fair play. <laughs> yeah, oh, he, sorry, definitely, uh, he definitely... Uh, works on his friendship with his Pokemon. So uh, he has mastered them. And at this point, he's just up a shield. Shadow Lapras uh, is running the Surf Ice Beam. And at this point, it's in range of double Surf. So he'll probably shield this one. Oh, no, he no shields this one because he knows he can take a Dark Pulse or a Sludge Wave, no problem. And Lapras just needs to get to the double Surf to secure this game number one. But one thing to consider real quick, I, I forgot to mention, there is a little bit of health on the Obama Snow, right? So uh, maybe he's saving the shield for the Obama Snow. Maybe, uh, as or sorry, Yusufro wanted to swap on that, doesn't get it. The Obama Snow has a little bit of health left, but uh, at this point, Shadow Lappers can probably Ice Shard for the win. Yes, I think you're absolutely right there, um, because those Weather Balls aren't going to do anything. Um, that shield alive too, so he's uh, he's in good standing here for this matchup. We'll have to see what happens in the next one if that uh, shadow lapras keeps for both shields once again. Beautiful, beautifully done. I got yeah, too that... excited over uh, over seeing Azure play, so just had to uh, take take a break. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I understand that, and yeah, the thing is, so. Azure completely dominated with the core of Escavalier and Shadow Lapras here. You have to imagine uh, Yusefro is one of, gonna want to bring his Machamp, right? So how does as does Azure now know that Yusefro wants to bring his Machamp and just completely bring a team that counters Machamp and win that way, or does he stick with his same core? It really relies on once again if it has. Payback. Uh, with Payback, it actually doesn't do so well against the lineup itself. It only wins against Escavalier and that Shadow Lapras. So it, it really falls on if it's Rockslide or Payback or uh, what else it could possibly have. I mean, uh, there are all sorts of moves. I know, uh, I think it's got Bullet Punch, which is a kind of a weird one that might come up, <laughs> but this is Ultra League, so we have seen worse. I mean, it could. I mean, let's let's be re if we're gonna throw things out, let's be really spicy. Elite <laughs> fast TM and put in Karate Chop on that. That means you can ah. get cross chop off in four cross chop off in four Karate Chops. But Karate Chop is a lot less damage than Counter, so you won't be able to farm things down as easily. I say this because I played with it. I didn't wasn't a fan, but <laughs> you never know. Better players than me may make it work. <laughs> yeah, Karate Chop close combat incoming uh but yeah I, i'm really curious to see if you say fro does bring out that machamp to counter what azure just uh, dominated with and if azure will just now bring his flying types does he just bring like gyarados togekiss and like i know you're bringing machamp uh bring machamp into this so let's get into game number two <laughs> bring machamp into this <laughs> Hello and Muck and Cresselia leading off here. Uh, we will have to see what uh, oh, that Cresselia is out of there faster than uh, than you can blink into that Lapras once again. We're not seeing that Machamp, so it doesn't look like he was making that uh, that slight adjustment. But going to that Waterfall and Polion, he's got Hydro Cannon. He's ready to go. He's probably got a Drill Pack on there too. By the looks of it, Surf coming through. This is, good, um, this, this is a good um. This what? This is a good good swap. Yeah, it's a good it's a good swap pointing in Empoleon because I think um, there's the maybe the calculated assumption that um, it's Surf Ice Beam. I mean, even if it's Surf Skull Bash, um, Empoleon walls that Prista High Heaven. So this will be um, this is yeah sensible play. Just chipping away at this Lapras, tank, tanking what's thrown. Has to be careful not to allow too many Surfs to land because they all add up over time. But yeah, this uh, yeah. this is looking good. 
and sw yep. and snuck in a waterfall there. The interesting thing is there's no Machamp for Yusei Fro and Azrae running that A B B team, right? The Cresselia lead, the Shadow Lapper say swap, the bait out the Machamp and the Escavalier in the back. But there was no Machamp, so now he's just going in with this Lapras and he's surfing here. Uh, this won't kill the Empoleon. So let's see if you say Fro has the composure. He does have the composure. Taking that surf, no problem. Gonna be able to farm down with Waterfall. But no! One, one more Ice Shard into this surf. And now, yes, you say Fro has to commit a shield. That's what I was. That's what I was wary of, thinking we can't let this carry on too much. There's a bit of lag there as well. No, no, this is a really good play. He doesn't want to be farmed down too much, so you say Fro lets him get lower health, mm -hmm. and so he doesn't get farmed down as much. Really good plays here by you say Fro. Yeah, good. Yeah, fair, fair point. I stand corrected. Oh, does he barely get there? Oh my God, he barely still gets to the Hydra Cannon. Obviously, Cresselia, this just tickles, but Cresselia is going to get a decent amount of energy with the Psycho Cuts. Yeah, definitely. Just manages enough to throw a fast uh, charge move Moonblast now. Swaps out immediately and catches the Dark Pulse, which is big, which is big. It, it's neutral, but it chunks. It chunks, yeah. so he has to shield. He saved two shields for his Escavalier, knowing it's so good against the opponent's squad. And this Escavalier is staying in against this Muck. This Muck is just staying in because he knows that he has the Giratina. And does he swap on the move? He does swap Beautiful. on the move. He swaps on the Beautiful drill run. Done. Fantastic play by Yusefro. Oh, it's a shiny as well. Gotta respect that. But yeah, no fantastic timing on to catch the drill run there. And now Escavalier is in a world of trouble because those counters are going to do absolutely nothing. And even worse, this Giratina is the Shadow Claw variant, so the fast move is not resisted by Escavalier as well. So uh, yeah, just have to throw in more drill runs, chip away, because that's all that can be done. But Giratina is just going to keep going and going, trying to gain, get the uh, Ancient Power proc, maybe. So let's see what happens here. No proc, sadly. No. Yeah, and he he doesn't get it. This 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 uh, Giratina. Oh, oh my God! And then the, the swap back. Ultra League is so there's so many thick mons that the timers come up so fast. Azrae counters with the fantastic swap, but it was on a CMP uh, for a Moonblast here, and obviously this will KO the Giratina. But nope, the Giratina out. does oh, commit wow, a shield. Okay. But the thing is, Giratina doesn't have a, a shadow charge move, and he's just going for the, the, the proc. He's just going for ancient power. He's just trying to get his boost. He wants he's putting all his hopes in a boost. Does he get it? No, he doesn't get it. And it was also another CMP. So now this uh Giratina is gonna go down. And I believe uh there's one shield left for Azare that's just gonna be held onto for the Escavalier. So oh, man. Mm, this will be this is going to be tricky because he's got he's got two dark pulses. Great, great undercharge. Really well calculated. Yeah, Fantastic really undercharge. Was able to get one extra snarl. Now the drill run is coming through, but it, this Ooh, is KO. This is yeah. KO. He's timed the switch beautifully there to like land the K uh, KO before uh, Alola Mark mm -hmm. drops next Dark Pulse in. So yeah, really good play there. Really, really good. Two. They were like there were three, three fantastic switches in that one battle. Just again highlighting just the sheer like sort of talent out there where they were just like one just like oh you've got this brilliant play i'm gonna chuck in a brilliant prey oh no here's another brilliant prey and the rest of us are just like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i do love about ultra league is like the pokemon have so much bulk that you can actually make a lot of sack swaps because those timers just come up they just come up they just come up they just come up and uh chia chia just came up too because now it's two to two against squirtle squad so this is a tight race for who's going to meet uh, uh, in the finals here. So uh, let's see who the next competitors are. Yeah, Azure wins. And yeah, two to two so far. And I think we, I believe we have Master League and then uh, two more uh, of the Sylph type formats if I, of the Floating City, right? Yeah, the Specialist Cups, so you're absolutely yeah. right. With that Master League here, we've got Roach Babyface and Swagron coming out to, to party here with us. But yeah, the um, teams. we got the, <clears throat> the Master League teams. Let's see if there's any Dialgas. And no, oh, yes, Swagron with the Dialga. And uh, 
Rocha Babyface with the Giratina origin here as their legendaries of choice. Now that is interesting with Giratina origin because you um, you do because the Dialga is meant to be a natural counter to it being uh, having access to Dragon Breath, but Giratina will cause problems for the Swagron's Metagross uh, as well as a Swampert um, and also the Machamp. So it's good against three of those Pokemon. It, it can even withstand Machamp's Rock Slide as well quite easily, um, which is to Giratina's credit there. So um, I would. Uh, even though it seems to be the we the weaker of the uh, two legendaries when you compare the two teams, I think it's uh, we're going to see it. I reckon we'll see it at one point in the battles. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's so good and it's protected quite nicely uh, by Excadrill. So if you run the Giratina Origin and the Excadrill together, the Excadrill covers the weaknesses, which is the Dialga and the Togekiss. So maybe. Uh, does uh, Rocha maybe run a, a Giratina double steel type of line, uh, an ABB, just trying to get out the, um, uh, just trying to protect the origin as much as possible? W what do you see from a, a, a threat score point of view here, uh, Joel Swish? Hogekiss seems to be running the biggest threat, or with the best threat scores for Rocha. I mean, running 500, of course, against itself, but uh, the only other loss it has is Metagross, because, well, Fairies and Steel types, they just don't, uh, fairies don't take it very well. Um, now, Metagross, that being said, is not a positive matchup for any of the lineup for Swagron itself. Um, I mean, it, of course, running 500 against itself, but uh, the only win it has outright is that Togekiss. So we might not see it simply because that's a concern, or we might see it because Togekiss is such a big player in this matchup. Yeah, great, great points there. Um, yeah, the Togekiss can run wild if it doesn't uh, run into that Metagross there. Or, I mean, the Excadrill uh, as well, or sorry, the Excadrill is on the Roach's face, or Roach's side. So yeah, there's no real answer besides um, the Mirror Togekiss and the Metagross. So yeah, maybe Rocha will run that Togekiss here, but let's just, let's just get into these battles and, and find out. Ah, they're one-sided on this one. Oh, and Exodrill uh, already at an advantage with this lead. Nice. Switch out Definitely immediately. Nice out right away, going for that Gyarados, of course. Switching out. Now it's a Gyarados against the Gyarados, and we've got Waterfall and, uh, and that uh, Dragon Breath itself. So uh, a different matchup to begin with here. And that probably yeah, explains it... why Gyarados was swapped into rather than Togekiss. Because if you could be sure if it was that Gyarados was running Dragon Breath, Togekiss would have become the safe swap. Um, so yeah, let's see how, whether... Oh, they're not going for the bait here, going straight for the crunch to try and finish this KO, uh, to KO this Gyarados before it does any more damage. Uh, nope, doesn't reach it, so just going to chip down with Dragon Breath, but doesn't manage to kill it off before another potential Aqua Tail hits. Let's see. Exactly right. Uh, Rocha had two options there, the Dragon Breath, a Gyarados, or the Togekiss, but now he guarantees a positive matchup against Dialga, because he has Togekiss and Extra in the back, and here comes the Metagross, and he called it just perfectly, getting to this crunch. So now this Metagross is in huge trouble, and Extra in the back with two shields. It's just looking so good against uh, Swagron's line. Uh, Metagross is going to get a nice farm down, though, that will be impactful. Metagross hits quite hard. And uh, here comes the extra drill, like like we thought. And uh, does he ever go for the? Wait, is this mud slap? This, this is might mud be mud slap. slap. So this is mud slap. So a farm down with fast moves alone is uh, is uh, on the cards as well. Um, so yeah, it was it was definitely that's what another thing that um some, somewhat surprised me. Good switch there. Switch, beautiful. Ah, uh, but nope, didn't fall. Um, Rocha didn't fall for it. Straight for the drill run. Is the shield coming out? It is. Yep, it is. And good call on the shield there. But now here comes the toga kiss. And this is where it's got problems are going to start because in a shielded scenario, Togekiss can charm down Dialga or put it into the red at the very least. And this is going to be a real problem uh, for um, for Swagron. Now, the Ancient Power needs to be shielded, otherwise Charm will just finish it off. Um, underpowering it slightly, just in case. But And I don't know if he forgot to put him as best buddy, but he's at 4,024 CP with a ribbon. So quite low CP for a, a ribbon Dialga in this... Iron Head is going to do a ton of damage to this Togekiss, KOing it, but now one shield left for this Mud Slap 
X Kadrill should just be enough. He could shield the next uh, Meteor Mash, but doesn't even get there. And uh, Rocha Babyface takes it 1-0. to zero. It's impressive to how much damage that Mud Slap did um, against Metacross, really chunking away at its health. So yeah, um, <clears throat> maybe there's an argument for Mud Slap Extra Drill after all, rather than Mud Shot. Who knows? Uh, yeah, and I think... Uh, uh, no, Joe Switch, I was going to compliment you, because I think uh, I think the reason that Swagron brought double steel is because it was worried about that Togekiss you were talking about. That Togekiss, like we mentioned, does run wild, but Excadrill changing to Mud Slap and Gyarados changing to Waterfall on either end of the spectrum does adjust a lot of the matchups. Uh, the Gyarados is no longer 500 against itself. What happens is it actually gets to a 700 threat rating, the one with Dragon Breath. So we need to keep that in mind too. That's definitely something to, to focus on uh, in, the, in the matchups themselves. All righty. All right, let's just get into game number two. How will these uh, players adjust? We got here a Togekiss lead into Togekiss. So this is interesting because this is either going to come down to the back line where someone's going to bail out early. Did we see what uh, Swagron's moveset was on his Togekiss? I don't think we did, did we? So I wonder if they're both running Ancient Power or not. That would be likely in Master League, but let's find out. You know, and Rocha just make attacks on these flyers because oh boy, they can drop quick. I think it goes through and another and slips another charm in. Wow, that could be game changing yeah. for Rocha here because he slips in the charm as you said, so he's gonna KO the Togekiss. So now he has swap advantage with Exadrill mm -hmm. in the back. That could be game changing. Just the fact that this lead played out like that. The only difference is whatever he has on the back for Swagron is going to get a nice farm down, but only two waterfalls there for Swagron. So this is where this Gyarados matchup can come in handy, because this Gyarados with Dragon Breath can take the other. Uh, the Excadrill doesn't have any positive matchups aside from Dialga, as well as the Metagross there. So that's uh, something just to keep in mind, but um, we'll have to see how shields are invested. That can always shift the tides of battle. And the dog has come in, and here comes the extra drill, and Mud Slap is going to chip away at this dog so easily. It's uh, somewhat entertaining to see uh, what is quite a relatively diminutive Pokemon in Excadrill take apart Dialga like this, so uh, quite funny to watch, in a way. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, he's just going to go for the big farm down, just yeah. Mud Slapping the crap out of this uh, Dialga, and he's going to get the two Rock Slides, which are very impactful against Gyarados. Uh, Exodrill has a very high attack. Uh, he's going to need, I think, either two or one Mud Slaps more to get to the next Rock Slide to threaten another shield too. And here it gets to it, and this is uh, going to threaten the second shield from Gyarados for sure. For sure, yeah, because it's a definite KO. Um, as you say, Exodrill's attack is just enormous. Um, just like the frail brother of Galarian Stunfisk, as I like to think of it. <laughs> Goes yeah, and, and now this crunch is is about to KO here, Joel Switch. But you're well, okay. like, like I mentioned there, that Dragon Breath. Oh, let me get it there, though. Oh man. Oh, but finish the job off. Yeah. Man, uh, that was uh, that was a clinic. Uh, Rocha Babyface takes that two zero. Uh, wasn't that close? Uh, the first game he got that lead and really helped him, and then game number two, uh, just getting that extra charm through, able to win like that Togekiss lead, I mean, that, that just controlled the game. If if Swagron won that Togekiss lead, then he would have won the game. So I don't know if that was a timing thing by Rocha Babyface that won him the game or if it's just luck. But either way, uh, taking it 2-0 uh, for Team Squirtle Squad there. Yeah, decisive, very, very commanding battle there. They, like uh, Rocha Babyface lane came out complete control. I think that team composition was just really, really solid uh, there. So um, I think, again, this just highlights that team building is uh, half the battle. Um, so and having to think about what you're going to come up against and have some an answer to everything in some way, shape or form uh, is a big deal. So no, well, congratulations to Rocha Babyface. Really, really good plays there. So yeah, so yeah, this it is three the two Squirtle Squad. So this puts um, Team Chia Chia in the hot seat. It's an elimination uh, round. They have to win two rounds straight 
to be able to go to the finals here. And we got Speediest, the world champ, trying to take it home for the Squirtle Squad versus Linden, who's a fantastic battle himself. Uh, and this is going to be a floating city uh, matchup. And I'm, I'm just looking forward to this one. This one is going to be fantastic. A battle of the ages there, for sure. Of course, they, these two, I mean, like you said, he meets up with them in most tournaments there. So it's um, they may have each other's number, which could be a, another part to this interesting matchup. Yeah, there was yep. a lot of, in the in Speedius' interview um, um, earlier, there was a lot of, you could tell from how he was speaking and his sort of mannerisms, how, there was a lot of love there for uh, here for Lyndon Ryu. So, um, yeah, I, as you say, they will they may know each other's number quite well, so it's just a matter of who calls the shots and guesses the right ca um, tactic that their opponent's going to use and reacts to it in a, in a better way. So, yeah, this looks this will be fun, and it's always good to see um, the former Sylph world champ. Well, the defend reigning defend and defending Sylph champion from last season in action again, um, and just show show us exactly what he's made out of once more. <laughs> yeah, and, and Speedy is here rocking the triple flyers and the Wigglytuff, and now Linden only has uh, one Pokemon to resist that with the Steel typing, which is the Ferrothorn. So two Shield Wigglytuff could have some play but also those triple flyers, that Articuno that puts in so much work, doesn't really have a natural threat on Linden's team. You could safe swap that Articuno and feel pretty safe, but what, what do you got from the threat score, uh, threat score point of view there, uh, Joel Switch? Really depends on is Swampert. Does it have Earthquake like we're used to, or does it have Sludge Wave? Because if it does, it can get some play against Wigglytuff. we got to keep that in mind, too. Oh, Yeah, great yes. point. Yeah, yeah, Sludge Wave, uh, Sludge Wave, Swampert. We tend to see mo um, Sludge Wave more often in in Great League, specifically to deal with the rampant fairy that is uh, Azumarill. Um, but the same concept can now apply here for this particular uh, restricted meta. Um, so yeah, the only doubt I'm trying to, I'm just looking around and thinking if it does run Sludge Wave, it means the matchup with Ferrothorn is nigh on impossible to win. Um, I mean, it's not I, it's not great anyway. Um, you would need an energy lead and no shields to hit the earthquake, and you know the Ferrothorn would need to be chipped away by something else beforehand. But so that might be a sacrifice worth making to get the coverage against fairies. But we will see what Linden comes out with. We will see. Yeah, definitely. One last point, real quick. Speedius does have that three flyers, but it does not have a drift blimp. So maybe a uh, vigor off safe swap by Linden is looking real nice. But let's just get straight into these battles. This is uh, Squirtle Squad looking to advance to the finals and has an Articuno lead. Single move, Speedius. What are you doing into this vigor off here? But he does shield this first body slam. Well, I suppose nine times out of ten, you're going to have icy, uh, icy, uh, be running icy wind and launching that. But yeah, like um, this, the lack of second move means no, hur no hurricane to deal with any uh, uh, problems like uh, like yeah. Ferrothorn, where you want to nuke at something maybe. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what That's he does. A piece to Articuno in removing hurricane and only having that icy wind, it actually loses to Vigoroth in a one shield scenario. Ooh, okay. Interesting. And actually, uh, no, uh, Speedius knowing that, oh my god, he overtapped yes. by one ice shard, or maybe Linden snuck in one counter, getting to this next body slam, and now it's a CMP. No, it's not a CMP. No, Speedius didn't, didn't actually throw, but can he get the farm down? It's going to be so close. He does get the farm down. He had to use two shields, but he does have two icy winds. So he does throw this first icy wind. Maybe he's going to bail out because he's just going to get farmed down by his fair thorn, or he could just throw the, the second icy wind. But now Linden just has two shields. Uh, and looking really good here. He has gone for double icy wind here, yeah. Let's go on, Jolson. Right, Sorry, mate. No, it's not a problem. Leaving him, leaving with that Ferrothorn with some parting gifts here. Only one getting through the shield, but uh, minus two on the attack sack could uh, do quite a bit of damage for him moving forward. But he's able to remove the debuff right away, going into that Wigglytuff, which is going to face off uh, quite well against this Stunfisk. It, it has about a 555 in the one-to-one -one scenario, but Wigglytuff doesn't have shields, so it could be a whole different game here for us today. 
I think it was yeah. the, I think it was necessary to swap in Wiggly Huff because he wants to keep his Vigoroth in the back to deal with Ferrothorn. So he'd rather lose the Wiggly, even if it does do a lot of damage to Stunfisk, and finish the job off with Vigoroth, have some energy, deal with Ferrothorn after. Maybe that is the win condition or the play uh, being made. Ice Beam might land. Yes, it does. He does get there, and it is a CMP. But it looks like Linden is just going to let this thing go and just farm down uh, with the Ferrothorn. And the timer's not up yet, so he's going to get this full farm down. And all Linden needs to do is get the two Power Whips, and he's one to two Bullet Seeds away. This Vigroth has no energy but full health, no shields. At this point, this Ferrothorn is just going to be unleashing on the World Champ. Oof. This is going to be close because it didn't do 50% damage, just just under. And Vigoroth now does have enough for a body slam. So it really boils down to does this KO or not? This is going to be tight. Really yeah, tight. But, uh, still it one shield KO. left. It's a fast move. It's a fast move off. And oh my god, the bullet seed <sighs> barely takes it before the Vigoroth could counter down uh, Linden, taking that uh, one to zero there. So close at the end. Game of inches sometimes. It's just mad. How many how many battles have you had where it's come down to this kind of fine margins with just fast move racing? Just it's crazy. It's crazy how uh, how intense these battles are. Ooh. Yeah, and that, that came out so close. Uh, uh, Speedius gave up two shields for swap advantage. Obviously able to farm down and have bank up two icy wins, but uh, Linden with the two shields in the back uh, still almost lost there. Um, really close. Uh, and now. Um, Chia Chia up one to zero in this set. Uh, like they need one more win to tie this up three to three. But Speedius, can he reverse sweep and get two more wins and take it home for the Squirtle Squad? We'll have to see what Speedius comes up with. Because I mean, if you're looking at him with his stats and everything there, what we can see on a regular basis is um, his battles and matchups are actually equal. So, um, for instance, this season he's got. 67 to, uh, wins to 38 losses, so um, he's sitting at sort of a 63% adjustment. But the matches overall, 28 to 7, looks about the same. So he might be able to reverse sweep. He might be able to pull that off. Um, but facing off against Linden Ryu, he's better in matchups, worse in battles. So we, it could work out for him in the percentages, but those are all numbers. we got to remember, we are human beings behind the screens. That's what plays in here. That adrenaline, that heartbeat, that pumping, like just go, 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 that can play a huge factor. It's not just those numbers. I love those analytics. You love to see those. That's really interesting uh, coming out there from Joel Switch. And now we're going to see if Speedius can turn this around or will Linden tie it up for Team Chia Chia? Hype, 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 let's do this. Okay, Articuno into Swampert here. Um, so Swampert's going to be able to get this Hydro Cannon off very much quicker than the Icy Wind from Articuno. Shield isn't coming through, which is uh, unconventional, but interesting play. Okay, let's see how that goes down. 50% of um, health still remaining on the Articuno, and this is where the debuffs are going to start kicking in. So we know for sure that the second Hydro Cannon will not KO now, so... Let's see. What's let's see what the uh, plan is. You were we were talking. Yeah, he's going for it. And you know, you um, were mentioning Swampert having potentially having Sludge Wave here, and you're right. The Swampert does have Sludge Wave. So that's another interesting thing. It will there be a farm oh. down. No, no farm down. Just going straight for the icy wind. Wants to get this out of Swampert out of the way ASAP. Shield comes in mm -hmm. though to try and deal with that. Okay. And Swampert banked a Hydra Cannon, I believe, saving that for right. later for more impactful damage and then safe swapping into this Vigoroth. Uh, and now this Vigoroth does win this matchup, I believe. So he has to get to three Body Slams, and he already has two. Um, and the Wigglytuff should be able to get that Ice Beam, though, and force a Shield. And one Body Slam, it does he get the back-to-back, -back, or does a Charm go through? He gets the back-to-back. Yeah, uh, no great charm. timing yeah. here for, by Linden. Yeah, no, that's, per that's perfect as well. And this can... Um... This will explain why, um, like, uh, why Speedius was keen to bring the Wigglytuff in there, because if he is aware that Swampert has Sludge Wave, then using the Wiggly as a safe swap to avoid Swampert might is a good play. It just depends whether he's predicted that correctly or not, because I don't think it's been revealed to him yet. Vigoroth Mirror here, so um, Shield comes in to deal with the Body Slam, and then I assume there'll be a farm down of Speedius's Vigoroth on Linden's. So let's see. Yep, that happens as planned. Now what comes yeah. out? 
there's the Ferrothorn in the back. Uh, Boldo is coming in straight away. There is one shield for Linden here. Um, is he going to let this one go? Does he think it's the bait? Or oh, it doesn't kill, though, so he doesn't have to shield. And Oh, my God, Boldo's is a bad move. But then here comes the Articuno, and he's just going to power whip the Articuno. Does this power whip kill? It's resisted. Articuno only needs one more ice shard to get the icy win. This is going to be huge. It's going to be tight. Oh, just in the red. Wow, that's 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 big. That's big. That that's going to be really big. That costs the shield. It's going to get the debuff. That is really big. Really big. Now, Ferrothorn does get this farm down. Uh, how much energy does this Vigoroth have? Uh, will it get to this power whip first? But the thing is, uh, the this debuff. power whip is debuffed. But mm. I'm pretty positive Linden has a Hydro Cannon. Is he going to combo move? Is he going to swap combo move? He does. Yes, he he does. swap combo moves. Done. And he takes out the opposing Vigroth and Team Chia Chia and Linden are going to take it 2-0 to zero to tie it up. Wow. Wow. What a big, big play. Big play. Very well done there. Wow. I've got no words. That was great. <laughs> Fantastic composure by Linden to, at one health, bank that Hydra Cannon and use it later in a more impactful scenario. And he does just that. And he secures the tie for Team Chia Chia. And now we are going into the final match. It's three to three between Squirtle Squad and Team Chia Chia. You don't want it any other way. Whoever wins this next series is moving on to the Sylph All-Star Finals. Oh, you couldn't hype that up anymore if you tried. That was brilliant. So the uh, it's fu it's funny that the pre the previous semi final we did is um, is uh, was also three three, uh, and it came down right to the wire. And this one's going to do the same. And two really fantastic players um, uh, are coming in to uh, ensure to ensure their side is batting for the winning side and going into the finals. Um, Bit of background then on these two. Meron P32 was the uh, Asian, I believe, was the Asian uh, Continental Champion for for the Silverina in the last season. And Elisa Nobel is a fantastic player, hailing from Italy. Uh, she is a Go Stadium coach, and she has participated in many lot significantly large tournaments, including I think um, um, the potential Battle Tower that was meant to be at Naples. Very, very reputable, and in Europe really fantastic player lovely person as well uh, i've had the pleasure of meeting her uh, and ricky in the past at uh, in london's finest um uh, which go stadium funnily enough uh, also shoutcasted so uh, yeah no uh, both fantastic players i would love to see how they clash uh in this uh, final battle of battles not only all of that i do want to cut in right quick elisa is a three-time team tournament champion Big, right with the big. with the EU emperors, is that right? Yeah. EU emperors. They are three time Go Team Up champions. Uh, the Go Team Up preseason finale registration closed today. So if you're hyped for team battles, we're gonna have more to show you very soon, as well as Sylph factions coming soon. And then leading into that, you're gonna be seeing more from Elisa because with their three victories, they secured their spots and the Go Team Up World Championships. So can she secure this spot as well? For her wow. Team today, Gia Gia. Eliza, really good in these team formats. As you heard, uh, already won three Go Team Ups and in the uh, semifinals here for the Sylph All-Star. Fantastic battler. And uh, shout out to uh, Go Stadium uh, as well for those uh, Go Team Ups. I actually think that uh, Team PvP is uh the best pvp out there right now when you when you either like draft as a team uh it makes it have a lot of variance um and a lot of uh a lot of uh different factors that come into it and sylph uh adopting this team format for the all-stars is just fantastic so shout out to sylph as well uh to bring this team format i think this is so fun to have not only a team of seven but to have four different formats essentially uh we got uh the uh great league 
format, the Ultra League format specialist, the Master League um, format specialist, and obviously this Flying City format, which we're going to have for the finals here, which is uh, just a fantastic uh fantastic meta and this is four going to the finals so let's get into these squads between the squirtle squad of uh meron p and uh eliza uh with team chia chia all righty so we can see empoleon being the uh being uh, be, uh, being featured in this particular lineup for Meron P, which is uh, a little bit un uh, unusual. It's meant to be a nice counter to the Articuno, I presume, um, but it will have to be mindful of the big Stunfisk, uh, Ferrothorn, and unfortunately the Escavalier. So uh, there's a question as to whether Meron will bring it uh, against Elisa's um, Articuno or not, or will, or whether Meron will rely on something else, the Ferrothorn or the Stunfist, to deal with Articuno instead. We will see. But nice spicy pick that we haven't seen before in uh, the Floating City. Uh, so I'm interested to see if it does, if Empoleon does make an appearance or not. It could be really interesting, especially with Waterfall. If it happens to need to hit that Stun Fisk, you've got to keep in mind it is still super effective. Yes, Electric is super effective against Water, but that doesn't mean Water is not very effective against it. No, quite yeah, right. Quite right. I, I, fantastic point. And the thing is, though, uh, just having that Empoleon, you don't need to use it. It could be just bench pressure. Like, mm. look at how good Eliza's Articuno is against the rest of... Uh, Meron's team, which Articuno is good against every team in this meta. Articuno is just so good. But the fact that he has the bench pressure of the Empoleon could be huge. Make Eliza double think about that because obviously, like you said, the uh, it doesn't have the greatest matchups besides that Articuno. But you know, it's it's a little bit of mind games there for the finals here, and you, you love to see that. Anything stand out to you from a, a, a threat score uh, point of view, uh, Joel Switch? Just that Articuno, as always. I mean, it's it's just one of those pieces. The only loss is really a, a even matchup against itself in both of these lines. Uh, what we need to keep in mind is these are literally mirror teams of one another. The only difference is the Empoleon and the Escavalier. Um, now, seeing them facing each other, uh, like you've mentioned before, Empoleon does lose to Escavalier. So that, uh, depending on if either of them come into play, that's sort of what could make the matchup itself. I'm sure both of these Maddlers know it, being as far along as they are at this point. Um, I'm sure they can see that and they, they know that, but we'll have to take a look when we uh, pick up what the battles are. Absolutely. Let me just set the stage one more time. We have Squirtle Squad at three, Team Chia Chia at three. Whoever wins this next series advances to the Sylph All-Star Finals this Wednesday. Let's see the battles. Oh my god, that lead. That lead is just fantastic. Drifblim completely walls. Safe swap Articuno. It is Napoleon! He brings it! Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This could not have gotten uh, this lead uh, could not have started any better for Meron. Fantastic so far. So he's going to let the Icy Wind hit the Empoleon, no problem, double resistance there. So that's a little bit of chip damage. Now the key thing is to get off a, drill, a Hydro Cannon before uh, the next Icy Wind hits, and he does so perfectly, perfect timing there. Just what you'd expect from a uh, Continental Champ, I suppose. <laughs> Let's just just fantastic uh, to get the lead here and then actually bring the Empoleon and able to take these Icy Winds, no problem, as you said, double resisted. Uh, and he comes out of it with either a Hydro Cannon or a Drill Peck, and he's going to be met back by the Escavalier. And the Escavalier uh, isn't doing a ton of damage with these counters. It's possible this Empoleon will get the two Hydro Cannons before it goes down. Yeah, that's potentially the, uh, potentially a thing. You have to bear in mind, though, that there is double debuff now on this Empoleon. Actually, you know what? I don't think he'll make it. So, um, But still, a respectable amount of chip damage. And now Driftblim comes back in, another swap out into the Stunfisk. And this is going to be interesting as well, because um, you got shields here to protect the Articuno from the bulk of that discharge uh, damage. So um, the Icy Wind can now uh, kick in afterwards and hopefully reduce the threat from subsequent discharges. And now my question now is whether Articuno will drop uh, another shield to protect against the second discharge or not. We will see. 
Now, we do need yeah. to keep in mind as well, Rakuno itself also has Ancient Power and not Hurricane, which does shift a few of the matchups, to be totally honest. Uh, it does start to lose the Vigoroth as well as itself, as long as, of course, the other Rakuno has Hurricane. But we'll have to see what happens moving forward. And yeah. Eliza is in such a hole here because Driftblim obviously walls her Scavalier in the back. She has to make some plays here. Her Twitch timer is up. Maybe she's going to throw this uh, Discharge and then try to swap on a move later, save a Discharge for that Driftblim. She has to dig herself out of this hole and able to take this match. The advantage right now is for uh, Meron P here. And does he stay in? And oh, no, it is a swap. Exactly. Oh, and she gets to the Aerial Ace. Great play by Eliza. Ooh, she swaps really, really quick. Snipes down this Articuno with the Aerial Ace, but at this point, the Drift Limb has a ton of health and is looking really good to farm down this Escavalier. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, she had to do that because if not, I think the Articuno could have even potentially farmed down the Stun Fist and that would have been uh, GG at that point onwards. So yeah, sensible play to do this. Aerial Ace comes in now on this Drift Limb, I presume. Um, wait, just... wait, wait, does, does, her, does her Stun Fist have a Discharge? If Eliza's Stun Fisk has a Discharge, I think Driftblim's in range. Did she bank a Discharge? If she no. banked a Discharge, this could be over. And no! Nope. Nope. And the, the Driftblim had the Icy Wind banked up. It didn't look like she had a Discharge because I thought I saw a fast move animation by her. Uh, so it wasn't CMP. And Driftblim takes out the Stun Fisk there. Fantastic play by uh, Meron P. Just just to maintain that huge advantage that he had with the lead and then the swap in the swap in that was the most rock paper scissors i've seen this meta but it's because he completely called it out what he was going to see in the lead and has the hardest counter for articuno that i've ever seen uh on any team which is the empoleon yeah, definitely. Really, went, it just all went to plan for Meron. So we will see if Elisa can um, can adjust or not. Um, she's got the team for it, so it's just playing the mind games and uh, rolling the right dice, as it were. All right, it's all on the line here. Squirtle Squad up one to zero. Uh, as as you heard before, uh, Eliza is so good in these team formats. She needs to reverse sweep here to keep her team alive and to go on to the finals. Let's get into match number two. Didn't you try and call that reverse sweep last time and then- My God! Oh, wow. Meron oh P is just- is, is this man psychic? This is man psychic. He definitely has psychic typing because oh, he I led the Empoleon into the Articuno. And look, and then and look the, what's turned up. Driftblim oh into God, the Escavalier safe swap into the Driftblim. This is looking so good for Squirtle Squad. Uh, all he has to do is maintain uh, this swap advantage and he can take his team to the Sylph All-Star Finals. How does Eliza come out? She's a fantastic battler. She's in a hole. Can she dig herself out? Oh, is this going to go shielded or not? I imagine it wouldn't be because the Scavalier is going to struggle, but yeah, it's gone out and then farmed down on the Driftblim with the uh, Articuno potentially. Um, oh, what was that? Oh, there's the Articuno. Yeah, it looked a bit glitchy, yeah. And the Icy Wind comes from the Driftblim first, so that's going to be concerning for Articuno. I imagine a shield won't come because she knows Impoleon's there in the back, so there's less need to defend it. Um, and then is she going to time it oh she, she's going for the farm down fully and now is the shadow ball going to be shielded or not that is another question because that's going to do a huge amount of damage oh it's my not, god oh that's tough oh that's tough. shadow ball goes in they simultaneously die and now yeah. meron has two pokemon versus eliza's one and obviously the empoleon's a terrible matchup but it's not a terrible matchup after you can two shield with this articuno Double Icy Wind, and I think actually Articuno wins this two-shield matchup. So at this point, it's looking like Squirtle Squad is going to be going to the Sylph All-Star Finals. Yeah, it's really unfortunate that the um, that uh, Elisa's uh, Pokemon died with so much. Uh, the Artic her Articuno died with so much uh, loaded energy because I think she was hoping to just sneak what like survive on a whisper of health and drop the Icy Winds in, but it just didn't work out. Sadly, just the psychic mind of Meron P working in overtime clearly for this particular battle. Um, but yeah, no, this is, this is, this has got him written all over it. And Lisa even know, knows that this is 
going to be a bit too much. So not shielding the uh, the second icy wind. Um, so yeah, this might be it, sadly. And there it is. It's official. The Squirtle Squad winning four to three is going to the Sylph All-Star Finals this Wednesday. Congratulations to them, but also congratulations to Team Chia Chia. Uh, fantastic battlers, really well-played games. Um, so shout out to them. And wow, uh, what a fantastic series. Once again, it was 3-3 three to three at the very end. Uh, well done to all our battlers. Yeah, fantastic battles just all, all around. And I, I love how it, I just love how um, the battles were so close in so many situations. And both semi final, both these semi finals were 4 3 across the board, just showing that there wasn't much separating either of these four teams, uh, both the two that uh, are going to the finals and the runners up. So um, it, all it took was small margins in so many different ways. Um, but yeah, just. This is a brilliant concept. It brings people together. I imagine when factions um, become more of a thing uh, for other people to um, to try out, it's going to help bring communities together. Particularly with um, with you know when this pandemic hopefully calms down a little bit more and if physicals do become a thing again, I think more people will be keen to form a faction for their local communities, and then we'll see what happens. So yeah, I'm things are looking positive for the uh for this uh for this factions concept all right guys so we do yeah uh katie's gonna be adding something to screen here in just a second this is a surprise for everyone so uh casters you're seeing this just don't react just just yet okay um we'll kind of let you know whenever stream can see it but um we got the go ahead to go ahead and release we are going to be seeing squirtle squad versus the Seven Wonders in the Sylph Arena All-Star Invitational Finals this Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. And we are able to release their teams of six right now. So as, as we said at the top of the stream, in between every round, these, team, these teams are able to change what Pokemon they're bringing. So we're, you're going to be able to see who they're matched up against as well as uh, what they're bringing. So if you guys want to give us a small preview for Wednesday before we head out of here. Yeah, fantastic. Let's just take a quick look um, at these teams real quick and uh, get a, a quick preview. We're gonna, I, I'm looking for, uh, at the start, just how many Articunos are we going to see? Uh, we see a bunch of Articunos for Squirtle Squad. All of them are rocking Articunos. And then it, it, am I looking at zero? Articunos for uh, the Seven Wonders here? What I'm seeing here, too, that's definitely an uh, interesting pick. Another piece it to keep in mind here was that the Squirtle Squad originally in this matchup also had no Marsh, or sorry, uh, Swampert, which. Uh, right, the Seven Wonders one is there, but it is in Ultra League, um, that Articuno. And yes, uh, Oh no, actually I think all four all four of the um Squirtle Squad do have the Articuno there. And yes, that's correct. Yeah, it's and also one thing to note, no Empoleons. I don't see oh no, there is, because Maron is obviously rocking that Empoleon again. But the thing is, he doesn't have any Articunos to face. So now this Empoleon is like pretty much dead weight, right? Because there's no Articunos on the seven wonders. No, it was bank the uh, the only thing, however, uh, the only thing is um, while there's no uh, Articuno, uh, Articuno uh, Doctor Trotter's running the Pelipper, and Empoleon does war Pelipper reasonably uh, yeah. well, so maybe it right. has a has a mild functionality there. But you have to think. Um, Start uh, with you know, and Stunfisk also being on the team for Meron, um, that Pelipper is gonna face a double threat from that as well. Um, although the weather balls are not pleasant on Stunfisk, so yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe the Empoleon will have fine space somewhere, but who knows? Yeah, that's actually a fantastic point because uh, he is facing up directly against uh, Dr. Trotter, and you said the Pelipper, and also, like we saw, a lot of Swamperts running Sludge Wave, right. So yes. if the Swampert is running Sludge Wave, Hydro Cannon Sludge Wave does get walled by the Empoleon as well. Um, so that would be interesting to find out here. But uh, let's just look at the matchups. Uh, we're going to be seeing uh, Racha Babyface versus Mephiz in the Master League. Fantastic. You say Fro, 
uh, versus House Stark and the Ultra League Specialist. And then we got Four of the Battles versus Ricky. Then we got Speediest Chief versus Ali. Maron versus Dr. Charter. Steve, Vani, Burnabas, Parzable. Just a great, great players. Great, great matchups. It's going to be so fun to see. And like, like um, we were saying, it's going to be Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you guys come check out the All-Star Invitational Finals. Yeah, it's going to be super, super exciting. It's like all just reading to, as uh, as Bus is reading through all the names. You can just like with every name he mentions, I just think hype, hype, hype. There's so many strong, strong players. This is the best of the best as far as factions go so far, and I'm super, super excited to see just how lethal some of these battlers will be uh, and it will be a great honor to have all of you who are viewing to join us for uh, for this final uh, check it out and uh, just see the best in action really definitely a huge matchup to look forward to on wednesday i can't wait to be there and, and sit in with y'all and and be able to see what these guys do with their new team I mean, usually when you see something like this, it's uh, one of those regular tournaments that you can't do that switch. But when you can make those adjustments, that's huge. And it's going to be amazing to see what they do and what they practice as a team as well. Yeah, for sure. Ab absolutely. And I see a chat here uh, saying that the A slash, uh, the Alone Lynn Sand slash uh, pick is very spicy. And I have to agree. It looks like uh, the person running Ace. Uh, alone sand slash is running into a charizard though so that's going to be interesting how are you going to hide that alone sand slash not just from the charizard but i believe a vigor off as well so you guys will just have to tune in on wednesday to find out and uh without further ado i unless anyone has uh anything else to say i'll just go through uh a thank you once again to uh my pvp academy and team rocket all right sorry my pvp academia and then the Team Rocket Academy for uh, hosting the, the first two rounds. And then shout out to Go Stadium for putting on this production, uh, Silph Arena, for everything you do. Uh, my my co-hosts, my co-casters here, uh, Delion, Jolt Switch, um, Rambling Rabbit, and then, of course, the wonderful host, uh, Miss Mystic uh, in the back. And then all the other people that work on the uh, team uh, boards, uh, clips, edits, all the people part of Go Stadium working on that, or, or Silph Arena as well working on that. Just thank you to you all. Uh, this was a fantastic time, and I really, uh, I really hope you guys come check us out uh, Wednesday 7 p.m. for the Sylph All-Star Invitational Finals. We have the Seven Wonders versus Squirtle Squad. All right, we're going to go raid 2000 Red Red. So go say hi uh, over there. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Um, appreciate you all. I uh, hope you all have um, a great rest of your day. Yeah, take care, everyone. Yes, definitely see you guys back on Wednesday. Come check us out uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Wednesday for the finals. Take care, everybody. Bye. Good one. Right. Are we in the in the clear?